The Civil War is here, brother. That's right. That's right. Stash your guns, boys. Yeehaw! We're back. The Leftovers, baby. What a show we have. And the $10 trillion studio. Alex Jones is crying right now at How Spectacular. Studio, Our- studio got more expensive because, you know, Joe Biden. Inflation. The tax. Lumber prices. Mm. Hussein. Pecker. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I'm just I'm just saying things that like agitate conservatives or things that conservatives are saying, you know what I mean? Well, you know, we have so much show to get to today. It, it, it amazes me how much content there is every week. And this isn't even like election season. Oh, yeah. Wait till Trump is uh, announcing and ready to go. And He's start like campaigning. kind of already teasing it. I can't wait. Uh, I was talking to Matt Walsh on my on my other podcast yesterday from not the fascist Matt Walsh, the good one from <laughs> UCB and Veep. And uh, he was saying that uh, he saw signs up in, I think it was like maybe in Maine. He saw signs that said 2024 Donald Trump, the revenge tour. Oh. If they're going like to bill it as the revenge tour, I don't know. I mean, that's like. <laughs> He's ready. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for the revenge tour, people. That's right. Get out your muskets. Fix them bayonets, boy. The Civil War is coming. Where's your daddy? Uh, Today's episode is sponsored by Raycon. We love them, folks, don't we? Thank you, thank you. Now, first of all, we have a little bit of controversy from last week. We've got, but we'll get to that. Uh, First thing I want to do here today is talk about Ben Shabibo, Ben Shapiro, basically responding um, to you making money. Unacceptable. Yeah. He he's so right. Dude, I was watching this clip and I was like, this guy is such a fucking liar. Yeah. Every point he brings up against you is shit, first of all, that you agree with and addressed. Yeah. And he it's just unbelievable. Oh, let's just pull it up. He was seething. It was awesome. Dude, he was. His he, face was all he was angry. He was like he was like mad that, you know, he's like, how can there be a successful socialist broadcaster that's like only backed by his community and not, you know, millionaire donors? Uh anyway, you also ratioed him was pretty epic. Hit uh a year video got substantially more views than his. So that's crazy. Yeah, he's got like up. what, like four million subs too. Yeah, I was surprised. It didn't really bang hit off for him. Yeah, I mean, he was he was late to the game. He's too. failing the culture war. Yeah, that's why he's like. Uh, that's why he's doing TikTok react videos now. Like that's no, what he does not. now. Oh yeah, he does them all the time, and they do no, well. No, because there's a lot of weird cringe shit on TikTok. You know. No way. Wait, I gotta look at that real fast. Hold on. I didn't I know. love this thumbnail. I'm inside your walls, Ben. Yeah, that is so. F- oh, that's a good usage. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, ben Shapiro TikTok. I didn't know that was popping off. Yeah, he's just been like doing a lot of like. I think he's having a hard time juicing his content. You know what I mean? They. I mean, they're probably killing it on Facebook. I haven't really checked their analytics yeah, recently. Always, but like on YouTube, it's just like eh, not too great because like. The culture war stuff it's on the, the algorithm, conservative bro. side. It's yeah. The, it's the algorithm's getting crushing his world. Yeah. It's not good. So he's got to do whatever he can. Here's one that has uh, 6 million views. Ben Shapiro destroys insane far left TikToker. Yeah. Yeah. It's stuff like that. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't mean he's on TikTok. I meant he watches no, a this lot is, of. This, this is the Daily Wire. Oh, I didn't even know that that existed. Oh, he watch. He's watching. No, no, no. He yeah, does that, TikTok that like react compilation. I mean, that's the TikTok. equivalent of Crowder going out to a college campus and owning. Yeah. yeah. Freshmen. I mean, I do it too. I, I I love it, but like I'm not above that kind of content. I'm not. I wasn't billed as the uh, intellectual gladiator of the right <laughs> by the New York Times. You know what I mean? Shouts out to Barry Weiss. So here, let's see. Keep your sexual people are asexual people who still desire a sexual relationship but Uh-oh. don't experience sexual attraction. Hmm. QPO sexual people may decide to have a sexual relationship despite not feeling sexual attraction while others don't. Both are completely valid and communication is key. Hope I could help. Check out my hashtag Vampire Kid Explains for more. It did. It helped. It helped. I, I now understand nothing about what just happened. Fuck it all! have to work to come up with sexual minorities now. Right? We have such a viciously intolerant, brutal, sexist, heteronormative, sex patriarchal society. We have alienated so many people that they have to work so hard to come up with being a member of a sexual minority. That usage, like a person 
who didn't want to have sex, but who sometimes has sex? How do you exactly do you like identify into it? They didn't want to have sex, you know, that maybe couldn't have sex. That was like, incapable of like, I don't know, like me in high school and in college and basically all my adult life, <laughs> just incapable of, you know, finding a girl to sleep with me. I feel completely alienated. It's just like Ben Shapiro is <laughs> owning a literal 14 year old. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like a literal 14 year old yeah. wearing like, Funny makeup. Unicorn outfit. On their face. Sometimes you're into the sex. You're no longer cupiosexual, but this is the thing. It's all fluid, right? You can be whatever you want at any time. And no one has to verify any of this. You just declare yourself a sexual minority. What what do you you declare? What are you trying? Who who verifies your sexuality? What is that? Okay, so 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 when I was thirteen, uh, my my parents verified my sexuality. They weren't sure if I was a boy or a girl, and it was very normative for you know, for example, my rabbi to you know uh, uh, circumcise me and then suck my bleeding penis. I didn't say any of that. <laughs> I can't believe the things that he's saying here. Well, That's, I'm Jewish, so I can say it. I just, I'm, don't I don't even know with it. what that was. I can't, I'm not even laughing at well, it. Well, as at me. you know, there's a practice. <laughs> even in Israel, they don't do it. No, I, I should clarify. I'm, I'm familiar. Yeah. I'm familiar with the jokes. I have Jewish friends. <laughs> like, I, I know. I'm explaining for the people. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there is a, pra- or it's, I don't think they, maybe they probably still do it. But even in Israel, I think it's probably illegal, but. Traditionally, when you circumcise uh, a babe, this when I say tradition, I'm talking old school shit. But the uh, moil just takes a little sucky sucky of the blood, and it was actually really productive because the moil would sometimes give STDs to the newborn baby. Yeah, so that was good. Suck I've, heard, I've heard of that. Sorry, trigger warning. I guess. <sighs> yeah, that was you know. But it is what it is. I I, I too am unfortunately circed up. So they took something from us. You know, they did. Yep. Nice. That's oh. where we're united. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's just not a big difference between. No. Well, you're Turkish, but you're you're Muslim. Yeah. So they they snip you. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, there's a whole fanfare around it too. You gotta like normally in Turkey. I mean, I got it here. So because yeah, I'm an anchor baby, so I was born wait, here. Wait. Yeah. Oh, you, you were born that? here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, so, I, you weren't like 18 circumcised. No, 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 no. Because okay. that but, was a whole question. Of, no, in I would have never consented. Are you kidding me? I'd be like, fuck no, dude. At that Whatever. age? No. Yeah. No, they, uh, but when you're in Turkey, there's like a, it's kind of like a bar mitzvah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sunnet mm. is what it's called. And it's like a big ceremony. And you wear like this, you know, pageant dress, basically, you mm. know, this big outfit. And there's a whole celebration. And they, uh, and they, you know, snip, snip. And there's no blood sucking or anything like that, but we have a gnarly like old wives' tale myth thing as well, where they put it in the rice, like this big no pile of rice. No way, bro. Yeah. And whoever whoever gets the the pee pee part, no, they they are lucky. Well, they sure are lucky. I don't I don't think they do it. It's just like a, well, it's those like a stem myth. cells are no joke, bro. Yeah. Oh, God. There's hell is, There's good shit in that foreskin. Yeah, we've. We've been, everybody has some weird that's ass practices, bu- That's dude. rough. That's rough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but just to make clear, that doesn't really happen, uh, except in, you know, probably Ben Shapiro's uh, 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 temple or whatever. <laughs> He's very conservative. They, he likes tradition. I know Ben Shapiro likes tradition. Okay, I don't even believe this. that. He's like a violinist from Los Angeles. I mean, there's a lot of conservative Jewish people in Los Angeles, though. He's maybe. very traditional. Okay, like, let's watch. Anyway. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. So th- this is a picture of me when I was uh, coming of age. And my parents uh, said uh, very explicit to me that, I, you know, I am a male. They confirmed my gender. And, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I was not I, allowed to dress up like this, <laughs> um, even though I really wanted to. But uh, that's why I'm a beacon of masculinity now. And so when people tell me there's 52 genders, I I, I, I just I insist on verifying because, you know, I, I was on a wrong path, too, when I was that age. This P word is wet. Come take a dive. I, I just don't. I, I will never understand that because, like, a lot of these dudes, they uh, try to abide by this, like, super rigid uh, uh, standard of masculinity mm. that they themselves don't fit in. I'm sorry, but Ben Shapiro... If you want to go, if you want to talk about masculine traits, bro, you're pretty low on the totem. Yeah, and it's not, and that's not like, that's not a weird thing at all, but like, I'm the difference the between someone masculine. like myself, yeah. the difference between someone like myself and Ben Shapiro is literally a living, breathing proof that there is a spectrum, and it's not a binary when it comes to gender, For and sure. when it comes to what we associate with like, uh, yeah. sex. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, Crowder's gay, so that blasts that whole thing. Well, I don't yeah, know. maybe. We don't know. Allegedly. <laughs> 
All right, let's watch. But you know, if you've had sex with Steven Crowder, you should reach out to us. Yeah, if you've ever smoked meth and uh, if you happen to be a gay hooker that smoked meth and had sex with Crowder in a hotel room, please reach out. We will protect your identity. <laughs> yeah. I would like to find We protect our sources here on the left. The 100%. Market. All right, off the rails, but uh, let's. here is uh, Ben Shapiro reacting to Hassan making money. That is a truism of politics that hypocrisy is always newsworthy. Hypocrisy is always newsworthy. If somebody is a religious Christian and then they have an affair, this is a newsworthy event, Definitely. according to the media. If there's a politician who's right wing, a politician turns out to be gay. Really, really newsworthy, <laughs> according to the media. Do you have something to tell us, uh, Ben? <laughs> what I find about the what I find hilarious about this is that like, like uh, me coming out as uh, a, a uh, wealthy person, which is not even hidden and has never been hidden, which is part of the reason why it's never been like newsworthy really, uh, is um, as contradictory in Ben Shapiro's world as like a Republican politician who's like deeply homophobic in his policies and like hurts gay people uh, uh, coming out as gay, like secretly yeah. being uh, out as this gay. Is, this is the tip of the iceberg of the yeah. completely missing the point and, tr and just cherry picking, distorting. And this clip is really fucking insane. Yeah, it's great. Media. But there is one area of hypocrisy that is just not newsworthy to the media, like truly not newsworthy. And that, of course, is if you are a socialist who's extremely wealthy and gives very little charity. By the way, this is such a niche. Like how many. And by the way, how does he know how much money you've given to charity? He doesn't. He's literally just created this. Yeah. Straw man. Th this uh, this hypothetical. There's so much hypocrisy out there yeah. of, of socialists not giving all their money to charity. And it's like. First of all, <laughs> socialism is not charity. That would make Jeff Bezos the biggest socialist on the planet, if that's the case. You know what I mean? Right. Socialism is not about charity. It's literally the exact opposite. It is the, that in a, in a perfectly fine-tuned system mm -hmm. where workers could uh, take more of the fruits of their labor, which Ben Shapiro will get to in a second, then there would be no need for charity. Exactly. It Chari could still exist, but there would be no need for it ultimately because the yeah. government would provide for you. The need for charity is the uh, is the failure of government. Yeah, 100%. But having said that, I do understand in the immediate, in the situation that we're currently living, that uh, charity is unfortunately, in a lot of instances, a necessity. Right. And I do donate a lot to mutual aid. I donate to, wow. you know, I, I, I... I'd like to believe you, but uh, Ben Shapiro yeah. says otherwise. Well, the thing is like, I, I don't, I mean, I do some of it publicly, but like not full blown publicly. Like, look at me, like I fucking did this. I'm so sick. Sometimes I'll do it uh, publicly because I think it like motivates other people. Like during the Black Lives Matter, uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, uh, protests were happening all around the country. I donated to all the bail funds and stuff and, you know, urged others to do so as well. I regularly work with uh, other content creators who are friends of mine to make sure that we raise funds for, you know, I, as recently as like a couple months back, we, we did a run with Jordan Ewell for the Baltimore homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, and they raised a bunch of money there. I think it was like 25,000. Um, and I do this stuff all the time, both publicly and privately, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it's it, uh, the, the funny there's thing is nothing like, hypocritical about not yeah. at first. Yeah, exactly. Even my my favorite thing is whenever people get mad, they're like, huh, they'll pull up like open secrets. And it, that shows you that shows all of your donations to campaigns. Oh, and they're like, ah, oh, he's only donated to Bernie Sanders. Like, you know, he maxed out the Bernie Sanders. Like, what a hypocrite. It's like, what am I supposed to start a pack? And like. It's bro, you as a singular individual, like, or even with like a couple different people, like, what are we supposed to? Is that lobbying? That's how we're gonna. That's how we're gonna win this battle. So silly. It's just a bad faith argument, and yeah. he knows that. Like, he's smart enough to know what he's saying is bullshit. If you are that person, then hypocrisy just doesn't play a part. Hypocrisy is never a problem because, after all, you're calling for societal change. You yourself that's, don't have to abide by any yeah. of those rules. That's what because it is. some animals are more equal than other animals. But Ooh, an the a socialist animal has George the Orwin. <laughs> benefit of the bargain because you get to be a socialist as you want to, like Bernie Sanders, and then you get to have a lake house. You get to be a millionaire while proclaiming that billionaires on the flesh up. Nice impression. Whatever that was that really was. good. But um, yeah, I mean, again, it's like this straw man that socialists need to, they're like Jesus Christ, give all money away, give all 
worldly possessions away because you care about poor people. If you care about poor people so much, why are you wearing clothes, dude? You should be yeah. wearing fucking rags. Like, why do you have a nice house? Uh, it, like, if you care about poor people, it's it's absolutely preposterous. Well, and it's it, a lie that 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 really is effective somehow with people. Well, know? it is because again, a century of red scare propaganda, and it's really effective. It's so effective that even leftists themselves kind of get on that yeah. uh, train as well. And this notion that like you can't be successful about, while being a leftist or you can't be successful while being anti-capitalist, like I find that to be a really strange one specifically because of the industry that I'm in. It's not like I'm in commodity production. You know what I mean? I'm I'm in an industry where it's just me. Just the dude. For the most part. Yeah, and and it's, it's entertainment. There's just there's nothing contradictory about being wealthy and then at the same time advocating for laws and changes that increase your taxes. That's it. That's the thing. I don't need to vote in my interest. I fucking literally vote against my financial interests at every election. So yeah. that's it, you know? Yeah, and it, it's beyond voting for me as well. I mean, I, I believe that it, the electoral system has its limitations. And um, and because of that, I, I care a lot about like workplace organizing, democracy in the workplace. These are things that I care about. And these are issues that I not only highlight as a part of my job that yes, happens to make me a lot of money, but like didn't really not that long ago. It wasn't like there aren't, uh, you know, a massive amount of leftists out there who are super, super uh, uh, wealthy. It's not no. a real thing. Um, You're probably the richest uh, prominent socialist entertainer. I mean, they're just like, it's yeah. not this big category uh, that Ben Shapiro is making it sound like. Yeah, it, it's okay, not. So this issue has become relevant over the course of the past couple of days. Because a guy named Hassan Piker, who I believe used Hussein to be a Pecker. Young Turks guy, I don't really know that much about him. That's a lie, by the he, way. He I fucking ratioed him into oblivion a million times. Like he's just like, yeah. oh, I don't know who he is. I don't know. Like I don't know much about this guy, Hussein Pecker. Yeah, no. Apparently, <laughs> is a socialist Twitch streamer. There's a big article, big glowing profile about him in New York Magazine, titled "Streaming with Hassan Piker, the AOC of Twitch." I'm a political commentator with like stands. Okay, well, in the past few months, Hassan Piker, it turns out, has been revealed to be a very wealthy person, which is good for him. He has a lot of folks who are following him over at Twitch. That is his, uh, that is his prerogative, and I'm, I'm glad for him that he's been able to build a following. But I don't think a couple he of times in no, the last month. Not. And by the way, I'm like, Ben, you're so much fucking richer than all of us. Shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. Like, he, he, it's like, dude, shut up. Bro. Yeah. Instead, Hassan Piker should be making his wealth in the same way that I am by misinforming boomers on Facebook. He should be selling supplements with uh, asbestos and uh, sawdust in it that cures COVID. Yes. <laughs> and also hiring psychopaths like Matt Walsh. Matt. Who, woo. Yeah. And, and who literally I'm, hates Jews, apparently. <laughs> the last coverage we did. Not, not surprising. Yeah. Month, it's been revealed that this out and out socialist, I mean, this is what he calls himself, mm -hmm. that he is um, a very wealthy man. Quote, Hassan Piker was in a rage. A million tabs were pinched together like sardines at the top of his browser. His jittery cursor bounced between them, summoning news work, network news, Chiron's YouTube brands, viral tweets, and TikTok memes. The day's trending topic, Piker, who is 30, had purchased a $2.7 million house in West Hollywood. An ordinary Twitch streamer's housing wouldn't make headlines, but over the past five years, Piker has become one of the most prominent socialist pundits in America. The controversy about the purchase had made it to Fox News and Breitbart, and Piker was prepared to take on the interlopers who logged on to see the fireworks. Quote, the only reason my house is expensive is because of the area I live in, he growled. Are you guys really that stupid? Yeah, so like this is what he does continually is takes literally one, one small passage in your huge coverage of this story. You talked extensively about it. And tries to reduce it to like the dumbest possible argument he can have yeah. you make. Well, it, it's the to be fair, he is uh, white knuckling as he reads the <laughs> yeah, he New York Magazine article that was written about eh? me. And those articles are always going to be like you know trying to explain what I do to a bunch of boomers who still read magazines and stuff. So like that's going to be reductive no matter what. And I mean, I don't really care. I think the guy who wrote it was really nice. I, he was definitely a fan. Like he was. He was well aware. I mean, there, that goes through like an editing process, so it's whatever. But um, even then, it's like it's not my fault that the Los Angeles real estate market is like 
abysmal and awful and it's something that i routinely spend whatever you about. want on any property i know you can live in wyoming and buy a three million dollar mansion and it still doesn't undermine your politics yeah like my my politics is not like uh people should not have nice things <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's never that, been that's the, my point is like you, there's no need to even get in the weeds about like oh la's expensive it's like you yeah. can spend your money on whatever the fuck i'm, you want. I'm also an avowed hedonist too like i i believe that you know consumption is good for uh, sedating the masses. I think people need that. That's like uh, a, a thing that I routinely address and criticize pre prior e uh, experiments in socialist, uh, you know, transitional states. So that is something that I like literally does not fall outside of my, my point of view. That's not something that's changed throughout the years either. Mm -hmm. Like I've been advocating for that for a very long time. Um, that doesn't, that's not even a response to the charge. The charge well, is that for a socialist, you seem to be spending large, my friend. It doesn't, that's the like, charge. You could have, there are a lot of places that are not in West Hollywood that don't cost 2.7 Again, million. he goes, he didn't even answer the response. It's like, well, yeah, you read a brief excerpt of exhaustive coverage. Dollars. They're all over the United States. You can get yourself a tiny little shack and live yourself the Henry David Thoreau lifestyle for probably 30 <laughs> grand somewhere. 2.7 million bucks is a lot of money. I don't for see you handing that out. Dude, of, he's not Jesus Christ, bro. He's a fucking dude. The he's immiserated workers. Why would I? Why would I live in a construct? shack? <laughs> also, where are their right, shacks the for charge. forty grand? And his response is, "Well, of course it's expensive around here. This is West Hollywood," which of so, course is not a response. That is a response. Hiker said but, three weeks later. Wait, hold on, pause for a second. What's What's funny about this is that like he didn't have to do the meme. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people try to at least like couch their anger in like some kind of moralistic position and uh, some kind of like logic and reasoning and the intellectual giant ben shapiro here literally goes you call yourself a socialist why don't you live in a shack then like you didn't have to do that you could have just <laughs> you literally did not have to say well, why that. not why not anywhere just live else. in a cave bro i mean yeah. you don't even need to buy a shack that's it's, it's, pretty it's so stupid it is, it is well, a, if you're a socialist an then why don't you live in a cave and live by uh wood yeah. fire because ultimately that's and like hunt food for a living ultimately that revolves around like i want you to go away I don't want you to be successful. I don't want you to keep, you know, talking to people in the same way that you're doing. I mm -hmm. don't like that you are demonstrably changing people's minds and attitudes. So just go away. Like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just go live in an area where there's no internet connection. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and people uh, that don't make that argument that say like, well, why don't you live in a cheaper, you know, house or whatever the fuck? It's like, well, I'm comfortable. Like, I, I want to be comfortable. I want everyone to be comfortable. I don't know why people are... Yeah, getting upset at that. I've been living in that same neighborhood for many years. Nobody had an issue with it when I was Let me just make paying this rent to a landlord. In a perfect social society, there are still going to be rich people, right? Yeah, there's still. Thank you. That's it. This is not about. This is not about like uh, creating this weird equilibrium. It's about making sure that people get more and having the government absolutely cover the basic necessities for survival, and then beyond that, give people more time to themselves so they can pursue more fulfilling endeavors and, and all this stuff. It's just, it's silly to try to routinely move that conversation away to these aesthetic points. Yeah, I just got a note, actually. Ben's so upset, he's starting a new podcast, The Combat <laughs> Rs, yeah. The Right Wingers, and uh, looks like they're about to go hog hunting. Two manlets. Two boys. These are not Just short two boys. boys. <laughs> this guy, extra large and ben, extra high. I mean, yeah, this guy makes Ben look like a normal height, and I know Ben's like four seven, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quote: As long as you don't defang your core values, as long as you're still speaking truth to power, then f them. Yeah, speaking truth to power is being the guy who buys the three million dollar house and does interviews with New York Magazine, and then jabbers about how the rich don't pay their fair share. That's not where I'm speaking truth to power. It's just, uh, bro, if you were speaking truth to power, you would go live in a fucking hut and build bombs to be, you'd be the Unabomber. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, he, that's he's like, why, why, why yeah. he calls yourself a socialist. Why aren't you Ted Kaczynski? <laughs> exactly. What, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, speaking of Ben's height, and, you know, I don't like, first of all, I would never, uh, only because he goes on about masculinity, but he is actually like five, four, three. So. That's not real. I can't. No, that. I think no, that's voted. a real shot. Wait, really? That's no real. Way. No, for sure. He's like <laughs> four one, I think. <laughs> he's I he's changing the number, even. <laughs> he's a very short man. Is all I'm trying. He's to He started off with like four seven. Now he's on the four one. There's, there's nothing wrong with being short. It's just that he is this uh, alpha male that. Uh, I love. I love my short kings. Okay, short kings rule the world. Yes. Shouts out to Noel Miller, Cody Co. 
No more oh, so AB than just, Cody. AB, <laughs> okay, you don't have to name them. I'm just saying, but they are kings. They are kings. Jabuki. Like there's a there's a lot of short kings out there who are kings. All right, you're, you know? you're getting ready to round them up, dude. Stop no. putting the names out <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> yeah, that's my secret. Oh, what was that the uh, that fucking great Randy Newman song? Uh, short people got no reason to live. You don't know that song? No. Oh. What the? It, it, it's a satire about uh, hateful idiots. But he goes, short people got no reason to live. It's fucking awesome. It's crazy. I'll, I play. I disagree. It, I disavow that. But I, it is I a love, joke. You know, as a tall, I, I have to stand by my short brethren, you know? As, yeah. Uh, AB just told me Ben's actual height here is four foot exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's that crazy. Is, I'm reading that right now in the, in the Discord. Said. That is not what he said. <laughs> <laughs> what, is he going to sue no, me for no defamation? Fake news. No fake news uh, here. Uh, uh, Your Honor, uh, he, he, I am clearly uh, 5'3", and, uh, and Ethan, uh, d he absolutely uh, def uh, defamed me by saying I'm four feet. Now, that, 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 that's just unacceptable. <laughs> Spit in my mouth, look in my up, eyes. <laughs> I'm doing this in the least exploitative way you functionally effing can. Really? He says, it's my labor. I'm the one who's streaming for 10 hours. Welcome to capitalism, I didn't my get dude. this point at all. So that's the funny part where he's like, I got you. I owned you. It's like he's saying, he's basically saying like, is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow, right? And that is hilarious because that's, I mean, this is reductive. That's the f yeah. But that's literally like at the heart of Marxist theory is like being entitled to the fruits of your labor, being entitled to your value that you create as a laborer is literally the the opposite of of capitalists who uh, believe that they can make money off of the process of exploitation off of others' labor. Oh, it looks like we already downvoted this, by the way. But damn, um, I just didn't get this point at, that he thinks it's a own. It's like you clear you don't. I just don't yeah. get it. It's just weird. He thinks it's, it's a my own. labor. Yeah. Yes. Whose labor? Yeah. So, in other words, you bet on yourself. You've done really well, and you believe that you deserve to keep the proceeds of that labor. But aren't you exploiting all the people? Well, he's not. You're not saying don't increase my taxes and make social systems. No, I I, I am an advocate for all that and beyond. It's so like, I don't. Just, it, his logic. It sounds smart, but it's not. It's nonsense. No, you have to be like fully invested in the Ben Shapiro verse and his way of thinking to be like, yeah, he's really spitting right now. Yeah, he's fucking killing this. Well, one. a lot of people do. I mean, he's overwhelming people. Look at him. He's so pissed off. Yeah. dude. Yeah. He's just like, he, I'm telling you, he's like white knuckling through this. He's like, ah, why are they writing nice he's articles so about him? Angry people who are engaged in commerce with you. After all, what service of value are you providing them? You are Twitch streaming video games. That's Is that a, a vital social yeah. service? What makes, that service, significantly more important, socially speaking, from a Marxist perspective, than the guy who picks up the garbage. Why doesn't he own a $2.7 million home in West Hollywood? First of all, that would be sick. And also, garbage people are like the last, like, here's how out of touch he is, because people who work in sanitation are heavily fucking unionized. Yeah, they do well, right? And also, they yeah. get paid, like, out of out of all of like the the utilities workers like they get paid oftentimes the most <laughs> because they're unionized but what is he <laughs> and because they provide like a really important utility but so does the fucking so does the guy who's packing the groceries so does the guy who's delivering those groceries right. and uh my point is <laughs> literally that those people should see more they should see more of the profits uh, back in the form of their wages if they choose to do so, or even have a say at the very least in how those profits are used. You know what I mean? Ben keeps making, and I, this is kind of the fallacy that I see, what is he doing? He's saying socialism is, he's he's equating socialism to like pure equality of income for every single person like yeah. they're, they're making this weird argument that like oh you're a socialist that every person in the world should make the same amount of money despite their work but that's not that's not what socialism is it's is anything that is the communism straight communism Well, communism would be the lack of communism would be the final stage where it's like a uh, a, a a society that has is stateless moneyless classless um and that is never been realized has never been uh, that's never happened um it's like star trek the star trek yeah, universe right. uh, so that's that's entirely different uh but regardless like some people don't even agree with that and that's besides the point um 
even then there is no like equal wages there's just no wages right right, right. you know what i mean and that is not somewhere not something that we are like close to achieving but they just like what is he doing and a lot of conservatives do where they say well you're a hypocrite because not every single person does doesn't have the same exact income and quality of life is that an argument you're making no i've never i've never made that argument you and also that? the the irony no the irony is that the reason why i'm so successful is not because i'm like uniquely charismatic or anything i don't think so i'm just a dude right but the reason why i'm actually successful is because i have a unique voice in this space because of people like ben shapiro who have a baby-like mentality on what socialism is mm. and they spend so much time like vilifying it and and totally misinforming everyone that i think people hear what i have to say and they go oh that kind of fucking makes sense to me and, and so thank you ben shapiro for Can making I ask me you a question how much well, money in your perfect society what's the most amount of money someone can have i have no idea what the max cap on wealth would look like is I, there I don't a max know. cap i mean there could be yeah i feel like I feel like it's functionally impossible to reach a certain level of health or uh, wealth, sorry, without, um, again, hiring other people and like, yeah, of course, severely, you know, uh, severely exploiting them or at least like directly taking advantage of like, uh, of, of exploiting people overseas at the very least. Like, let me, let me ask you a more specific question in the case of a company like Amazon, which I think w you would agree that Amazon has, profoundly changed society and delivers the reason why they're success, successful is because their service is so unbelievably fucking good. They have created a product yeah. that is just, it's, it's hard to avoid because it's the, just so good. And there's a cost to that. And the cost of that is unfortunately the destruction of other small businesses, which Amazon in the most predatory way, predatory pricing uh, way possible uh, eviscerates them when they take advantage and utilize their, when they have to utilize the Amazon marketplace, they go in there like, this product's doing well. We are going to make it much cheaper. We're gonna deliver it much faster. We're gonna lower your placement on the search results and basically either A, buy you, buy you out, you know, or just drive you out of the market. Um, that's what you can do when you have functionally monopolized e-commerce in the same way that Amazon has, where they own more than 40% of e-commerce, uh, you know, and that's an insane number. So, yeah, I mean, there's this one really famous story about the diapers.com. Are you heard about the yeah. diapers? There was this one seller that was crushing it on, I think it was diapers, yeah. Yeah. And they had built this whole multi-million dollar uh, business through Amazon, and or maybe it was diapers.com or something. And anyway, Amazon, what Amazon does is they uses their data, then makes the exact same product, undercuts them at a loss. Yeah. They take a loss to put them out of business and then they raise the price. They do this all across the board. But my question to you is in a perfect so social And by society, the way, that's the business side, right? That's just the business side. I brought that up. And then the other cost of that also is that like overworked delivery drivers, mm -hmm. overworked people inside of bag. distribution facilities, like people pissing in bottles, shitting in bags, um, you know, people being driven out of the company for uh, daring to unionize. Mm. Um, and, and all of that is invisible to us because these are some of the most marginalized people. These are poor people. They're just trying to make a living. Yeah. They're oftentimes uninformed because society has told them like unions are bad, you know, they're mobbed up, whatever the fuck. And also, uh, you know, uh, they, they are offering an opportunity for them. Like in Bessemer, Alabama is a great example. Uh, the distribution facility offers $15 an hour. There's some benefits there too. Obviously, we know why Amazon increased its wages, minimum wage to $15 an hour before anyone else, because they were being bullied by Bernie Sanders hmm. and progressive activists uh, to do so. And now they use that as a marketing position. And if you're in Bessemer and you don't have a job, $15 an hour sounds fucking awesome, hmm. right? Regardless, you don't even think about the uh, time off task, like how much... Uh, how much autonomy you have over your own body when you're inside of one of these distribution facilities. You don't even think about that. What do you mean a time off task? Time off task is when you are not directly going the line that a machine has set for you inside of a distribution facility mm -hmm. where we use human beings basically like robots mm -hmm. where everything is calculated by 
very well paid mathematicians at Amazon corporate that decide what like these routes are going to look like, well, or that build route. AI yeah. to to figure out what these like distribution routes are going to look like. Mm. That efficiency and that delivery system comes at a massive cost, and that cost is uh, the the human labor put into it, mm. and how much they are abused uh, when you know they nick themselves or when they injure themselves and and that all of a sudden makes you an unproductive worker so you might get fired um it's pretty dystopian where it's like i'm pro- unproductive worker uh drop pull, open the floor yeah. put them in the incinerator yeah, they're gonna have the boston dynamic robots like basically with <laughs> with a fucking ar-15 on it being like you know 16 7 it's 4 it's squid games with the machine guns on the wall yeah exactly unproductive worker uh, but my, I guess my question I was leading to is: so in 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 a social uh, socialist society, oh, actually, this is they, they're going to be having these patrolling the routes here soon. If you look on your monitor there, yeah, that's, that's a machine gun mountain Boston Dynamics war dog. Yeah, it's great. I'm I'm so excited for the future that Hideo Kojima literally envisioned. I mean, this is like straight PMC like Hideo Kojima shit, <clears throat> Kojimbo. So, um. What do you do about Amazon in your uh, social... Uh, I mean, I've joked about this before, but you let Amazon monopolize everything and then you nationalize Amazon with the military. Boom, all of a sudden. No, but seriously, <laughs> like it, even from the ground up, let's say. Let's say uh, there's a few different angles, but let's say just from the money aspect of how profitable and how much money they make and how they treat their workers. Like what would be an ideal situation for you to deal with a company that large, but also with a service that's become so ingrained. Well, I mean, we already have a, a massive delivery route and a delivery system in the form of the USPS. Like the US Postal Service is awesome. They're not for profit. They are literally like written in the Constitution goods, express, right. expressly not for profit because yeah. that's what a government service that is so valuable is supposed to do. It's not supposed to work for profit. Sure, It's supposed to work for the people, right? And we fund it no matter what it takes. So uh, a similar structure could absolutely be applied to Amazon workers and in, inside of distribution facilities that uh, could uh, ease some of the burden, you know, d- give them more benefits, offer them additional benefits on top of that. The first, uh, the first way to tackle this problem before we even start talking about like uh, antitrust and trust busting Amazon and making sure that like the different uh, the different parts of the supply chain that they have completely integrated, whether horizontally or uh, uh, vertically, uh, need to be completely separate from one another so it's easier to manage and control. Before we even do that, I think unionization is probably the first step so that people have a better way to collectively organize, engage in work stoppages, uh, which will suck. We won't get our treats, but at the very least, like, you know, these people won't have to, these people will be compensated fairly. They will be covered. Uh, and I go back to the Bessemer, Alabama conversation because at the time, with respect to the rest of Bessemer's economy, $15 an hour seemed great for someone who was unemployed, right? That's awesome. Fuck yeah, I'm going to do that. That's a great Mm -hmm. idea. And a lot of people joined because of that, right? But what the media never really covered, and they are horrible at covering labor issues, um, but what the media never covered is that unionized distribution facilities in that same region we're making $22 an hour already and had mm. better benefits. So, uh, you know, this is not impossible. This is happening all around. It happens all around the world. Uh, it just does not happen in America. That's the difference. So you not unionize the workers, which I agree with. I mean, people should be making, they should be making more money, especially with how profitable they are. But then the question is, if you go back to the inception of Amazon, could a company like Amazon exist in a socialized, fully socialized uh, government? Unless it was like full-blown nationalized and like everyone is a public, uh, everyone worked for the public sector. Uh, no, of course not. I mean, there. this is why there's but so do many we miss out? Do we things. miss out in a way? If a company like, first of all, there's ways that we can make Amazon better for society, obviously, like unionizing. But are we missing out by excluding, uh, let's just say innovation like Amazon? Are we missing out as a society by making something like that impossible? Well, I think that the, I don't believe that capitalism fosters innovation, first of all. I, I, I don't believe that at all. And mm-hmm. there is plenty of, ex- there are plenty of examples that like, 
the public sector has actually been the main driver of innovation, like the fucking internet. You know what I mean? Like these are because big, grand, world changing technological achievements uh, can't be created uh, by for profit corporations that exclusively want to increase their profit margins and don't want to make mistakes and don't want to waste money. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be able to waste funds and resources and in, in, in an exhaustive way if you want to be able to build world-changing tech, mm -hmm. right? So I, I do think that, uh, you know, the, the profit motive gets in the way of like truly life-changing innovation for the most part in every sector. So I don't think we would be losing out on anything if we were to fund well, more. Uh, you know, programs like that, or if we were to even nationalize specific sectors, um, as so far as like say, what we would be losing say, out uh, on, let's say, go ahead. Sorry. You well, no, I mean, as far as what we would be losing out on, I think what you're, uh, coming to, what you're pointing out is that we would be losing out on, you know, getting our treats on time in a, in a timely manner. Well, listen, we're, we're in a, a society that runs on efficiency, yeah, like anything. And um, those differences do make a difference in terms of productivity of the society as a whole. Yeah, no, I, I it's think It's not that just treats is what I'm saying. It, it's a more valuable service than that. The way I can reduce it to something that you can personally see and experience is this. <clears throat> you own your own business you own your own product right you as a content creator are your best advocate because you realize all of the gains you have control over your own life you have autonomy so you're working fucking harder than most people are right we're in a different field because we are the content creators ourselves so we have wonderful people working with us alongside us for the most part like we are doing a, a, a lion's share of the labor, right? Um, my goal is to change the incentivization structure from the negative incentivization of fear of, of losing your job and therefore your health insurance mm -hmm. and therefore your ability to pay for shelter and your ability to pay for food to positive incentivization, similar to what a, a business owner like yourself would face or feel you wake up in the morning, you're excited to go to work. You want to work harder than everyone else. You want to be productive because ultimately you're being productive for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is something that we can do. That is something that we absolutely can engage in. Uh, as long as we have more autonomy, more control over our own lives. And even if we're doing something that is not like immediately in front of the camera, even if we're doing something that is um, uh, like, Cleaning the toilets, for example, right? If you understand that it's a necessity for the workplace to function, then you have a say in the most efficient way of doing it. And also on top of that, you're being rewarded handsomely for it, okay? Then you're not gonna have an issue with like cleaning the toilets. What is it? It sounds like you're saying you don't believe in managers. I mean, I don't understand that point. I think management should exist. It still absolutely has to. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, there are people who, uh, move parts around uh, in a massive supply chain and that is still a necessity. <clears throat> the only difference is I believe that it would be better served if those managers were working against a unified force that can still be like, all right, we're, you know, you're really, you're really fucking us over right now. You're, you're really overworking us. So as, if you don't give in to our demands, then we have some kind of way of, of uh, pushing back against that, some kind of way of retaliating against that. And a good manager will, a good manager or a good business owner will never even let that conversation happen because he's already got that ground covered. You know what I mean? Let me ask you a different question. <clears throat> Let's say in this socialist society, a company like Amazon using, you know, public goods and not super anti-competitive and and just doing everything the right way uh you create this uh society changing it's just so fucking good amazon 
did everything the right way. And it's so fucking good. And you've got Jeff Bezos at the top. Everybody's winning. But the guy is making so much money because it's just so he's still going to be a billionaire, even doing everything the right way. Hell so, yes. I, I, it, <laughs> in that situation. So what do we do? Do we that, allow that, Jeff to be uh, a billionaire or what? In that situation, I mean, that's functionally impossible in my opinion but in that situation no i mean if if everyone is let's well say taken, it happens fine but if fine. everyone is well taken care of i don't think that that, that is a possibility that's like i think that's an important point to say because a lot of people misrepresent socialistic values by saying that well uh you know you, why don't you give away everything if you done correctly billionaires can exist and i believe that too well, I mean, I don't think billionaires can exist. I like I'm saying I'm saying there's got to be a way because there's enough wealth, there's enough people, there's over, there's like 350 million people in America. Well, if you create a service good enough and service that many people, there's going to be billionaires. Well, the reason I've talked about labor billionaires before, maybe not on the show, but like LeBron James and and you know other uh, billionaires that make not billions that. I'm of talking dollars about business owners that use of, labor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the so there's the difference there though. Like billionaires can exist in that in that way. And it still says a lot about like where wealth disparity is at this moment. And these are incredibly- but They're, they're being paid well. Every All of his workers are happy and well provided. So can he have a billion dollars? In a situation where if every worker is still, uh, is, is devoid of exploitation and they have either democratically voted on uh, like having that uh, having that distribution of profits trickle upwards mm -hmm. in a way where like someone is making a billion dollars and also on top of that uh, there's plenty of um, also democratically uh, voted on uh, uh, like excess or surplus uh, revenue generated going back to a, a you know like a centralized command or or the federal government that is then adequately redistributed back into like our infrastructure and our other public sector employees and whatnot in that situation if there is someone who still has like a billion dollars then yeah it doesn't really matter ultimately mm -hmm. like there is i want to live in a world where there is no need to have a billionaire you know what i mean because i i see that as a policy failure on its face, especially with the current way that our economy is organized, in the same way that I see a single homeless person as a policy failure. Mm -hmm. Like that's, there's just something that went so wrong somewhere along the line that like someone could accumulate a billion dollars and so much more in the case of Jeff Bezos. Oh, even. so much more. Yeah, like it just, it, it could, it functionally could, or it theoretically could, I don't know if it functionally would, you know what I mean? Okay, but that, that I think it's an important point to make that to just to say like very wealthy like, people I don't know what can the, exist. What every single individual in that situation would be making, you know what I mean? Like that would be, or what the company itself would be making. So, you know, the, and and the reason why I say that is like it's impossible for billionaires to exist uh, where there is like equal or not equal, but like uh, a a uh, and a decent distribution of of surplus labor value and then also on top of that uh a, a decommodification of goods that are absolutely ne uh, necessary for survival and also on top of that like uh taxes that are going back into the government uh to to create infrastructure like i just don't see that ever happening it could but i don't see it, uh, How it a, as a possibility yeah, I don't know. I think my my thing about it is like, I think in the middle of those two extremes of like, you know, what we have now being the shitty extreme and what you have now being like the extreme idealistic uh, thing. Yeah, you like, you're... You're what is known as a as a European style social democrat. You believe that like it just, as long as the government is taking care of the working class, as long as the government is like providing shelter to those who need it and whatnot, then you know everything is good. I just think it's too. I think people are just gen in general too greedy, and I think people have this. Uh, it's like a it's a biological need to keep what's theirs. Right. You and I do not disagree on that at all. And that's why I believe what I believe. Um, I, I think that people are greedy. 
and and Marxist theory actually does not uh, does not go against that's, that. Either. That's why I feel like a society like that can never be achieved because at a certain point, there's going to be the people who do have the stuff, who do have the power, and they will. There's people that will. When they feel threatened to that point, the very wealthy, the very entrenched, there will always be war and that's, before that happens. No, you are, yes, and it's called class war, but what you're describing currently is literally the reason why Ben Shapiro makes so much money and is also kind of the reason why he's so angry right now is that like this system, and, and I, I fully agree with you, that's happening every day. What you're describing, the class solidarity demonstrated by billionaires, millionaires, incredibly wealthy people, happens even if you don't realize it. Mm -hmm. um, and we, and even myself, are beneficiaries of that in the same way that uh, even if we want to give back more to the government, and even if we want the government to adequately distribute those resources to those who need it, and not to the military industrial complex, for example, um, the system is designed in a way where it's like, no, you're, we're gonna cut your fucking taxes. Yeah, and there's yeah. nothing you can do about it yeah. because all the other billionaires and millionaires, they want their taxes to be cut. All the other corporations want to take advantage so of So I like, think like realistically, the best that we're gonna get is in the middle, a society where we have strong social safety nets and unions and people are well taken care of. There's still gonna be uh, extravagantly wealthy people though. I think uh, it's a it's a good, but I think way better good, than what we have now. Or, absolutely, but like I said before, that comes at the cost of still overseas exploitation, third world exploitation, um, and not even exploitation in the Marxist sense, where it's like uh, you know your labor surplus value being uh, used without your uh, without your approval or consent or say. But I mean like straight up exploitation in the colloquial way we understand it, where it's like wage slavery, like near slavery conditions. I mean, we talked about Ikea, like they literally recently were like, okay, we can't use child slaves anymore in our facilities overseas. Like that's kind of messed up. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, the, that's the real hidden cost of this entire system. And like one could easily say well you have a laptop in front of you you're a hypocrite like you have lap you have a laptop in front of you there is conflict minerals inside of that laptop lithium batteries that were extracted from the third world and that's absolutely valid that's a reasonable uh that's a reasonable thing to i guess point out it is unreasonable to expect someone to not use any form of technology though which is why socialists will say or at least those who understand the system say uh, there is no ethical consumption under a uh, capitalist organization of the economy. It's like functionally impossible. What can we do about like the countries that regulate their workers' conditions? I mean, like if you're in, if you're exploiting labor, let's say in um, Africa or uh, China. I mean, China's. I don't know Africa. Let's say. Well, China has like moved to the next step. Like they did that. They threw their labor at the problem, and then they were like, "All right." We've improved the conditions well, so now they're saying. outsourcing to other countries. But, but that's what. I, but also, that's another, I think, interesting point is that the exploitation of Chinese workers did bring a lot of people out of poverty and ultimately make their conditions. At this point, there is a minimum. There is, for the most part, as I understand it, like a fairly, the bottom end is a lot higher than it used to be. Yeah, no, the the uh, eradication of poverty that every capitalist likes to point to almost exclusively happened in the past like couple decades in China. Without China uh, being with China being removed from those metrics, global poverty and also without it, changing it, the metrics isn't themselves. That the a result, bit? So like isn't that kind of a natural result of send uh, exporting your labor to a country like now let's say you go to India where we export a lot of labor to India. Is the bottom line there going to increase as all that money comes in? It's entirely dependent on how the government uh, decides to take the uh, the the revenue. But how can I be how can I be responsible for how the government of India conducts itself? Well, America and and a lot of Western capitalists and the State Department that works in their uh, interest literally do this. Uh, through a series of controls that I've talked about briefly, like the IMF, the World Bank, implementing austerity measures, mm -hmm. implementing neoliberal restructuring in the government, and also sometimes when there is any, like any sort of revolutionary activity or any sort of revolt against that kind of system, directly 
funding and arming some of the most violent paramilitary death squads that are counter-revolutionary forces that end up butchering the people in incredibly violent ways. Well, so so that, like no. there is an interest in a lot of these countries, uh, in the people of these countries uh, to, to change the, the outcome. There is a mm -hmm. desire for it. Um, people of Iran, for example, they don't want to live in a fucking brutal theocratic dictatorship. Mm -hmm. They don't want that. Why is there a brutal theocratic dictatorship? Well, because America facilitated the overthrowing of a government that was democratic, was socialist, mm -hmm. or at least uh, you know wanted to nationalize its uh, extraction industry, its, specifically its oil refineries. And that was a big no-no for British Petroleum, and that was a big no-no for America. And what happened as a consequence of that? An incredibly violent, brutal, anti-imperialist force that was super fundamentalist, overtook in that in that volatility and started controlling the country in its entirety and has been for a very long time and they're super fucking brutal and it sucks like it so absolutely why, so sucks. why did that basically i guess why was china able to avoid that because they don't america doesn't have that level of influence over china america yeah america does not have that level of influence over china i would say that like dengue's reforms were um were were they're i mean demonstrably demonstrably successful yeah. they weren't but they did become successful enough by literally saying, all right, we're going to throw labor power at this uh, problem. Uh, we know that uh, capital owners will absolutely not be able to resist manufacturing their goods here if we offer them such competitive wages that it's like impossible, hmm. that it's like literally cheaper to ship products to China and then back to the United States, mm -hmm. right? The consumption engine of the world. Mm. Um, and it worked. It worked so well because you saw jobs being shipped overseas. Um, you saw the union, uh, the, the union power diminish and, and completely eradicate uh, in this country. And with that came worse distribution of, of profits. Uh, with that came less benefits or no way to actually demand better benefits in the workplace. And that's why we have so many problems like in comparison to other OECD nations. And um, it got to a point where it was so successful that like, do you remember the Obama documentary? The factory one? Uh, Obama oh, yeah, documentary yeah. for Netflix, yeah, factory, yeah, where the, yeah. a Chinese manufacturer came back to America to build, I think it was like glass panes or something for mm -hmm. cars. Like it, it, we destroyed our own domestic manufacturing and eviscerated labor power so thoroughly in this country that a fucking Chinese manufacturer can come back here and, you know, take on additional costs in, in the American domestic manufacturing side, um, exclusively because it's good marketing. Yeah, that's like crazy. now Chinese capital owners can come here and be like, all right, we're going to, you're going to work for us. <laughs> and that's that's how that's how much we have thoroughly dismantled labor power in this country that's very interesting and it's it's like a national security concern if you want to think about it from the point of view of like uh uh in the way that like hogs think about it you know what i mean it's just it's terrible well as someone i i own a business in clothing obviously and the manufacturing in america now for clothing it like is non-existent where oh in, i know it, it, it's like in china and not only that but in china they're they do stuff that like you can't get done here I, and they're, I they're, they're great at it. They're the best at it. The conditions are good. And if you try to do what you do in China here, if people think clothing is expensive, try making it in America. I mean, like a hoodie like this, if you made it in America, first of all, I just got to say, I mean, I can tell you right now, I, I work with uh, unionized <laughs> domestic manufacturers and uh, finding like garment production with those standards has been probably the most difficult part of the process. You may not be able to. And if you do, the hoodie like this is going to run hun hundreds. Well, right several now, hundreds. This, uh, this, what I'm wearing currently, this is not out yet. And we haven't even like, this is not going to be the colorway for it, but this is like domestic manufactured and, um, and union made. There are so many limitations. You can't do color. You can't do cut and sew. Unique designs in the way that you're showing, right? You can't do any of that stuff. Well, you're... You're probably using a blank, right? Yeah. And the blanks are made in China. No, no, no. These blanks are... Oh, they are made here. So these are... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything that I'm using is domestically manufactured and union... Uh, Interesting. Union produced. 
And the price point that the original, uh, the company that I work with gave me was so fucking insane. I was like, that's no what shot. Was We're it? not doing that. They wanted to put $75 on, as a price point. I was like, you need to lower this down to like at least $54 because- 54 bucks even for a hoodie? Like you really could, there's no way. And even that's really expensive. Yeah, because sure. well, 54 is like what you pay for like mass produced blanks from China. Clothing is expensive. A nice yeah. clothing is expensive. Yeah. So- um, I was like, you need to figure out a way to lower this to $54. I don't care. We'll like cut out on the design side. I don't, you know, I want to make sure that it's like relatively affordable. Um, same with t-shirts. Oh yeah. They're like they're, it's incredibly costly. That's why people were shitting on AOC when, when she had the tax, the rich uh, sweater and it was $54 and everyone was like, Oh my God, tax the rich. Well, well you it's know, it's also a fundraising. It's hood. literally it's for fundraising. Like, it's obviously <laughs> but the other it's side of the reason why it was $54 was because it was union made and domestically manufactured. It's more expensive. I don't have a problem with that. Um, I think that I would rather, I would rather do that than, you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, not do some of the really cool shit that I want to do, uh, but make sure that it's still, you know, union manufactured and domestically produced, but it's really difficult. It's not easy. It's, like, and well, the, the problem is and like also when I don't you get shit about like turning profit. So it's, yeah. I have that. Uh, I have that opportunity to be able to do so. But you're, wait, you're saying the hoodie that. comes out to to the MSRP being seventy five, or it comes to you for seventy five? No, the ultimate, uh, yeah, the, the retail the cost, yeah, the retail. And I be, wonder, I wonder what's your profit margin? On I have that. no idea yet. They haven't even shown me that yet. I don't even know what the breakdown is. Like, so the thing is, like, how we produce stuff is so you have to use a bunch of different manufacturers that specialize. Yeah. Otherwise. So like a lot of times we'll do printing in the USA. The printing in the USA is really good. So for some reason, that's one of the things that still works well here. So we'll end up, you know, sourcing all kinds of things from all over the place mm -hmm. to get the best product. But it's very, yeah. it's, but, it's but like I'm saying, the reason why I mentioned that is because like you would not be able to do what I'm doing and still, make money and like hire people and have like a business um that's the difference like i i get that and also you would not even be able to like experiment with unique garment manufacturers and uh, that can you know take on that kind of demand um that might change though and the reason why i say that is because right now we're experiencing a severe bottleneck in our uh in our our logistics uh, I don't know if you're aware of this right now, but like there are, there's like a six line of like fucking carrier yes, cruiser, whatever the fuck, tanker ships that are sitting on the port yeah. uh, right now. And and that's part of the reason why we can't get like big items like uh, delivered uh, on time in a timely manner. That's a, that's a part of the way that, uh, that's a part of uh, the reason, the reason why we have that problem currently is because of the way that we've designed our supply chain to be as light as possible. Hmm. And uh, small problems, like minor tweaks, will lead to gigantic issues. And then we'll come back as like inflation, come back with people not being able to get their goods, uh, and, and a pissed off American population because we care about consumption, commodity consumption more than anything else. So, yeah, all that shit hits us really hard, all those delays. And the counter to that is improving domestic manufacturing, like building back our resources and our facilities to ensure that you know we can have a vi we That's have the viable like the here. truth is if you want to manufacture in america it's all like artisan boutique shit like they don't have the mass producing cost cut cost yeah cost cutting that all went uh, away and i do suspect it might come yeah. back because things are not looking too great especially if you want to go to trade war with china like donald trump did then they have a lot more, they have an upper hand. Like they have yeah. a significantly better uh, uh, advantage, like significantly more advantages in the way that they control so much of the manufacturing and so much of that supply chain. Yeah, it's pretty, it's kind of, it's really sad how like, I mean, America used to be a manufacturing powerhouse and yeah. uh, it's just totally gone, the, all of that. But anyway, we got to thank our sponsor. And when we come back, let's get off uh, uh, angry little Ben Shabino and move on to uh, other uh, topics. So we will be right back. Time to take a short break. Thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this socialist podcast. I know it's crazy. It's insane. Is, it, is Are we a socialist podcast now? I thought there was a disagreement there. No. Like your... Yeah, there is a disagreement. Yeah. So. I'm not, I wouldn't go as far as to call my, I, I'm, I'm, I like the democratic uh, socialist moniker. 
Mm-hmm. And Raycon does too, in fact. Yeah. Is that, are they, are they saying that that's good? <laughs> no. DSA, DSA, no, sponsored assuming. by Raycon. I, I'm just assuming. There's so much going on in the world, guys, and it's hard to get excited about stuff, but these Raycons, mwah, I love them because it's the good vibes. It's the beautiful earbuds. Love Raycon. Let me show you how it works. It's got this recharging pack. You plug them in, they recharge in the pack. That's crazy. It's insane technology, technology man. They fit beautifully in the ear. Here's the thing about Raycon. I can't even hear you now. Talk. I'm saying what? so many terrible things. What? We're going to get demonetized now. What? I can't hear him. You just said all the worst things. Whether you're pumping up, winding down at work, or working out, Raycons are my go-to on the audio. And now they've got the new everyday earbuds that look and feel and sound better than ever. They've got this improved rubber oil look and feel. It feels so nice in my ear. It's like a... A nice, Is it fucking your ear a little bit? I was say, it's like a nice cock in my ear, bro. <laughs> nice little cock in my ear. <laughs> um, you know, it's optimized, a perfect gel fit right in my ear. It's just beautiful. And the sound is even more impressive than the feel. They've got settings to make sure you get the be- beautiful, perfect sound. You want pure mode is good for podcasts, blues, instrumentals, balance mode. Also good for podcasts, rock. Heavy metal. It's all good for <laughs> and Well, not bass mode. Nope. Bass mode is good for hip hop, EDM, and reggae. Bass mode is good for the leftovers podcast, though. The, you bump up the bass. Come on, yeah, that's right, brother. Come uh, on, brother. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe in that case, they're all good for podcasts. Basically, just listen to our show with these. Okay. There's also an all new awareness modes for when you need to be listening to your surroundings as well. And Raycon offers. Eight hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. There's also a built-in mic, uh, so you can take calls on your earbuds at the press of a button. And Raycon starts at half of the price of other premium audio brands. And they sound just as good, and I can confirm that. I use my Raycons. They sound bomb, and it feels really good, too. I I recommend it. Thing is, Raycon comes with a 45-day happiness guarantee, so that's kind of a no-brainer, wouldn't you say, Hassan? 45 days is a lot of days for you to figure out if you like them or not. Well said. I think. Right now on the leftover, it is. Right now on the leftovers, listeners can get 15% off the Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash leftovers. That's buyraycon.com slash leftovers to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash leftovers. All right, before we get to the main segment here, there's one other video that I feel like is absolutely essential to watch. So good. Oh, yeah. Charlie Kirk, uh, a.k.a. Mr. Potato Head. Um, this is kind of this guy, uh, Ben Glib, who I, is a comedian. Mm-hmm. And shout out, because I have never seen... Honestly, someone represent the abortion debate so well and just fucking eviscerate. Yeah. Potato head. Absolutely owned. Fucking destroy him. Just why this is just His a face joy to is watch. So funny. It's like I love this video. You're talking about like the how it's squished together. Well, I mean like that a, in general, but then his reaction is. It looks like God like, photoshopped his fucking face to be like goofy. Yeah. Poor guy. I mean, not poor guy. Well, his main donor died, Foster Freeze, and he just looks like shit ever since. His like hair is all disheveled. Yeah, I noticed he stopped showering. Yeah, he just looks he just looks crazy lately, and like he's been getting more and more. You like, mean the the meat company, Foster Freeze? What the fuck's Foster Freeze? Uh, he's a, oh. a billionaire mega donor for like the original mega donor for Turning Point U. Or, Dude, yeah, I Point want USA. a billionaire donor. That's so. His dad uh, used to work for yeah, don't uh, the coke brothers fund ruben too uh yeah 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 they fund I'm everything so jealous, they fund man. everything dude but yeah I foster want... stephen freeze uh is a uh That's american investment man. Real? yeah foster freeze fries it's like sounds like a batman villain yeah i mean he, i mean these guys are literal villains <laughs> so he was an american investment manager and prominent donor to the republican party and christian right causes um <laughs> and he <laughs> Unsuccessfully sought the Republican nomination for governor of Wyoming in the 2018 election. Poor guy. And he lost the primary. And uh, he is like, I think his dad, Charlie Kirk's dad, used mm. to build like apartments for him or something. And Charlie literally just directly reached out to him and was like, yo. Can I have millions, daddy? Yeah. And yes, he was so. like, you're a young, buxom lad. Let's do it. I love that. And now he's fucking dead, dude. And he stopped showering. He's losing debates. It's falling apart. So watch this. This is the best. 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 
I'm not exactly sure the other. Exactly. The but fetuses have tails. Let me go back a little bit. Do humans and go uh, ahead and uh, turn uh, it up. embryo has tails? May, so it's a work in progress. So you're working on having kids soon. Why haven't you adopted yet? Are you going to adopt kids well, that are married. in need of help? Wait, so pause for a second. I do kind of. No, it's not a work in progress, bro. You need to fuck to be able to <laughs> have children. Like, yeah, like Tim, Tim Poole's a work in progress. Yeah, it's he's not, like, <laughs> my dude, you are unfuckable, okay? You it's, start it's by not, showering, dude. It's not happening. Damn. I live a busy life. But well, I, I would love to adopt. Life. Actually, it's on the Busy day. life? Okay, awesome. oh, yeah. Busy life. Yeah, he's just like. He's so busy. It's just, it's sad, dude. Sad. He's just like too busy fucking, you know, well, wearing you could, diapers on college campuses and shit. Well, you could take the Keemstar method and just start tweeting out looking for applicants. I mean, he, horny posting on, on the timeline is Charlie Kirk. That's dangerous. <laughs> That's a dangerous All right. endeavor. All right. We have, we're, we're, we're having too much fun here. Let's okay. just watch this. Yeah, let's have less fun. So Charlie's going to adopt soon. Excellent. Potentially. At eight weeks, we have tails. Uh, at eight weeks, an em uh, 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 embryo has tails. Do humans have tails, Charlie? I'm sorry, what? Serious question. Do human beings have tails? I'm not exactly sure the essence of the Do question. Do human beings have tails? Do you have a tail? You know, I, I have <laughs> never met anyone with a tail. I'm not exactly sure the essence. Exactly. You know what he's getting to. You're already in the process of being owned. Yeah. It's he a, knows. He already knows he's being owned. Charlie Kirk reached out to my agents to have me on this this show, I think, or whatever, like his new show. I think this might be his new show. I was like, fuck no. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah, I love it. it's called Debate Night, and you'll see at the end, he literally ends early because he's getting owned so hard. He wants to love that. debate. Oh, that's so good. I'll just play that. But too. fetuses have point. tails. Kind of proves that at that phase, they are not a human being. They got tails. Humans don't have tails. We're not dinosaurs. Let me even show you a photo, <laughs> if I may, okay? Do you truly, in your heart of hearts, truly believe that this is a human being this without a doubt without a doubt yes this is a dolphin fetus oh. so, without a doubt a dolphin <laughs> fetus is a human being this is a human fetus look how similar they look but quite different dolphin you just confirmed that a dolphin in in life do you confuse dolphins for human babies often <laughs> he's and now he's flexing Dude. now he's flexing He's like, I fucking destroyed you. The the funnier the funnier meme is like when they zoom in on his face and he's like, Ugh! like he literally he's, you see him get like hit in the face it's with the a fact. Best fucking moment. I mean, and and also just such a great argument. And actually, it's it's confirmed that well, Charlie dolphin. is actually a dolphin. So yeah. I understand why he would confuse the two. Yeah, no, he's he's can't, he started as a dolphin. Damn, embryo. he is so gummy, dude. That's his like, gum, oh, get that out of here, dude. I don't want to see that. Yeah. Nothing uh, wrong with gum. We love our gummy kings. Okay. I just he's not a king. So let's well, he's not a king, but it, we love our gummy kings. But the thing is, like, he now now Ben here, I don't know him either, but I'm I'm a fan now. Yeah. Uh he's just he's just flexing. He's like dancing on the on the Well, and line. he shit and he deserves he's to. doing a touchdown dance. But here we go. Watch Charlie try to save face. Uh and it's very small, so he doesn't have much to save, but here you let's go. Let's see. There you go. Go ahead. So let me you ask you a question. You go to SeaWorld and you're like, someone's got human babies in that aquarium. <laughs> Get the human babies out of the aquarium. <laughs> so you labeled it as a human fetus. No, so I did, did not. That dishonesty. No, you I did it. not. I didn't label it as anything. Let me, but you, let me say let me, human fetus on there. Let me ask you a question, though. <laughs> so let's, let's hold up no, those No, but pictures. you labeled sure. it as a human Is fetus. Is there a moral difference between the dolphin and the baby? At this stage, no. <laughs> No, you no, just, no, you no, just no. confirmed that. Now, let me ask you, a human and a dolphin, is it okay to kill one and not the other? Is there a difference morally between a human and a dolphin? I, mean, I don't like to kill dolphins, but if, when <laughs> do they're living... Like do you like to kill babies? No, I don't. And when they're living, I certainly am not in favor wait, of killing so, either, let, let, but obviously I protect let, a the human over is, a dolphin. Wait, the counter here is just like, okay, would you abort a dolphin fetus? Like, yes, who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, nobody yeah. cares. The point, he's just so desperate to, like, uh, he's uh, fumbling. No, it was really good. This he's was, in free fall right now. This was great. Now, I'll just say this. I, I am not, I mean, I, I've debated Charlie uh, twice at Politicon, and I've debated plenty of other conservative commentators, some of the greatest. Uh, and uh, I will say this. I think debates are just pseudo-intellectual uh, wrestling, basically. It's just like sparring. It's for entertainment. It has the capacity to change people's minds. Certainly, there's a 20% in the middle that could go either way. But ultimately, you're not changing anyone's minds by, um, by, by reasoning and like, you know, using facts and logic. And, uh, and, you know, the truth comes out in the debate in the same way that like a lot of people think it does. 
Um, this is how you win people over to your side by thoroughly and promptly humiliating your opponent. Right. I was wondering where you're going with yeah. that because I actually do think this is extraordinarily yeah. effective. And and it's it. He made a fool of him, and his argument is foolish. Yeah, he he destroyed him with superior rhetoric, and because he, I mean, he, the facts are on his side. Certainly, unless you're having like a philosophical conversation of what constitutes life, the he facts just, are literally on his side in the way that we understand it. So he he has that, but he, oftentimes, like if someone is like really good at like flipping uh, flipping talking points back, you know, you could still recover. Sure, Charlie exactly. could not. This was really embarrassing. So like he just this man, and he played. He fell into the trap so good too. Yeah. You know, uh, if he wasn't such an ideologue. He wouldn't have fallen so perfectly into that trap of do he didn't you see think, it coming. do you think for sure in your heart that this is a baby, a human? Yeah. He, you you see the you see like the the fucking the rainbow Mac uh, cylinder pop up in front of his face like like he's just like he's like going through the talking point tree. You know what I mean? Without like, a doubt, no hesitation. He's just yeah. like trying to figure out like oh fuck, what do I have <laughs> for this deck. one? We're off the rails. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, dude, would you eat a dolphin tuna? <laughs> it's like, nah, dude, you just just take the L. You just hold to it. Think, but nothing happens. Uh, here, uh, it continues. Oh, hold so. up the human one. Sure. Is that not alive? No, it is not alive. <laughs> well, then, well, how is it able to have a heartbeat? It's attached to Fucking an alive own. being called a woman. Wait, so it the doesn't have a heartbeat? Does it? No, it doesn't have a true oh, heartbeat. Oh, yes, it does. At some point, it does. 22 days after conception, the child's heart begins to circulate. Not That's alive. bullshit. That is also disputed science and accuracy. Yeah, it's weeks, literally not true. The child's eyes and eyelids, nose and mouth and tongue of form. Not no, no. alive? It, it is not a heartbeat at 22 weeks. Wait, so pause for a mind. second. What he's talking about, you know how fucked up this shit is? They like show images and they be like, that's a real baby. Look at that. You know how big that thing is at fucking at the heartbeat stage? It, as big as my fucking pinky, yeah, like, like not even my grape, pinky. Like smaller. Fuck that, yeah, dude. That's like insane. Size. Okay. What yeah, no, it is, is a they, parasite. They shit they do in like Texas and conservative. Uh, they have like these fake abortion clinics where they bring you in and try yeah. to brainwash you and guilt yeah. trip Family you. Family planning center. They they harass you essentially. Yeah. Uh, it's really uh, it's really fucked gross. up. Yeah. And you can it's legally death, do that. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Or alive. Which one is it? That is not true. It is becoming. Pick one. It's dead currently. It is oh, not it's dead. Alive. It is not alive. So you were once dead. You defined you life alive. as dumb fuck. What do you call not existing, freak? Yeah. Anyway. You're, he, not, you're not like a human. That's not a human being. That's not a baby. Whoa, whoa. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You weren't existing at one point? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you were fucking. It's like, how old are you, Charlie? Uh, 31? Okay. Well, uh, the universe is 7 billion years old. So. Yeah. I just. Uh, the ending so is. Stupid. Here's the ending on debate night, just to kind of put a cap on this. Debate night goes off the rails. I gotta watch you guys. Cool so thing now. Thank you. We're done. Last Thank you. We're done. If you're not responsible for what happened on, on Jan 6, Thank is you. that because unintended consequences happened that you, you didn't anticipate? We're done. Debate night's over. Kind of like mothers that have an unintended pregnancy, they didn't anticipate. So if you want to be cut some slack for Jan 6, maybe you could cut women some slack. Thank you. Who We're done. Unintendedly get pregnant. Debate night's like over. You're the domestic terrorist. You're a domestic terrorist. for peaceful <laughs> protesting, my friend. Thank you. Domestic terrorist. You ginned up an insurrection on our, on our country. Debate night went off the rails, Charlie. Yeah, why you, so, see, the thing that I love about conservatives is that they're, they're such fucking content demons that, like, you know, uh, Boo Boo Bennett does this all the time, too. Like, even if they get owned, they're like, ah, fuck it, post it. It's like, you didn't have to post that, brother. Like, you got fucking thoroughly owned. He has sponsors. He has obligations. He's got to post it. So that's really funny. And then the other part of that, of course, is that it doesn't even matter if he gets owned because conservatives, especially ones that, like, love Charlie Kirk, they're so fucking stupid that, like, they, they don't even that. think about it. They're they like, watch. yeah, he yeah. he still, he conducted himself in a good manner. Well, no, they'll like be a, like, like, that a guy's manner. a fucking dishonest debater. Of course, yeah. thought, I don't know, whatever they say. But anyway, I love how debate night got off the rails. And uh, awesome. here is Charlie Kirk briefly after um, the debate. He has his face gets smaller and smaller every time he gets owned. He gets owned, yeah. Yeah, it's so sad. All right, moving on. So that's the fun stuff. There's so much stuff to get to, but boy, we 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 uh, take our time on topics. What can I say? And I like that. We're we're we love pausing. We are well, yeah. Together, we are the pause king. Yeah, it's nobody so bad. Okay, so moving on to our main topic here today. God hates flags. Of course. Look at that. 
not a reference to anything uh, particular that uh, some uh, Christians like to say. Yeah. So what are we, so what are we the talking cons- about? Today? Yeah, so the conservatives have been flag obsessed uh, with the Blue Lives Matter, you know, and all this stuff. Um, they love flags. They need their flags. You know, it starts from the Confederate flag. Here's a meme that I've seen going around. Like, uh, here's a little shot. This is a good uh, TikTok account, The Good Liars. Here, just kind of give you an introduction on their obsession with flags. It's the American flag, but you pull it back and it's the Confederate flag. And I actually think that's like the most honest flag I've seen here <laughs> at a Trump rally. It's the American yeah, what do you think? You it's it like, it's you know, uh, dude, you're, are you, uh, are you a traitor or American? I just don't get. No, they're but, like, no, I'm racist. <laughs> yeah. That's what that says. I'm American, like, nah, but I'm racist. You don't understand. Hey, here's a website. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I American flags here. You can buy it for 10 it's bucks. Disgusting. Oh, that are was they, definitely made in China. Are they saying that they, uh, when you pull the flag from underneath, you're a Democrat? Is that what that means? Wait, this what is... What the fuck? Where was this made? This is definitely made in China. They don't show it, but there's 0% chance that that's made in America. At it was being sold bucks? for six bucks. <laughs> yeah, no so, shot. So you'll see, like, I think this is a, basically a, a revolt against the rainbow flag and um, other such things. They, uh, The Confederate flag, they just need... They want so badly to be separate that they need to... Um, they need their own flag, essentially. So here's an album with some of the flags. That it's just, just it's just so pathetic because it's like, listen, listen. The 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 Confederate flag, like you're a fucking loser. Like you lost, dude. You're that's literally a participation trophy for a four year long endeavor that ended with a you know thorough destruction and evisceration of everything you believe in. And not only that, but like even Robert E. Lee himself in his deathbed was like, please don't put up any fucking monuments. Like I'm. We got owned, bro. Like, just don't, just don't put up monuments. And then, of course, the hogs were like, "Yeah, fuck that. No, we're gonna do that." Well, and, they did it in like the 1900s. Yeah, and, and you, yeah, exactly. They didn't even do it immediately yeah. after. There was like some bro, movement. It, it, do you know what would happen if, after shortly after the Civil War ended, if people walk around with Confederate flags, they'd be fucking like, bro, that's like you're trying to die. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's it, not cool. Yeah, but the Daughters of the Confederacy have like very actively been able to change public education, especially in southern states, to reflect a completely whitewash, completely revised history. That, it was uh, about state rights. Yeah, that makes it... That's the reason why you hear that all the time. Yeah, state it's rights straight up what? about exactly. slavery, bro. Yeah. To own slaves, motherfuckers! Yeah, it's like... Yeah, it's, it's just states' rights, totally. That's well, why Texas didn't free uh, its... its uh, black population we need like, states right the own black people anyway here's some of the flag they've in it they've uh inadvertently created their own rainbow flag and dan what are the what are these stripes mean i need a i need a key to decode there, this there actually is a key in the dock but i can uh pop it open and, and yeah give you pop, a little, pop uh, it open on the other screen if yeah you could. uh so they actually now they sell these flags where each line and color means a different thing so obviously blue lives matter we've got one for the cops of course can you zoom a bit i can't uh yeah, so um, starting from uh, the orange line, that is for uh, search and rescue uh, uh, personnel. Search and rescue lives matter. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they do, definitely sure. matter. Red line, of get course, is firefighters. Line. Firefighters get a line. Uh, the yellow line, which I'm actually rocking right here behind no, me. No, yellow line is security. Wait, isn't yeah, it's, it? It's security guards and tow truck drivers. Yeah, tow yeah. truck drive lives do matter yeah which we I mean, I know they're in the line of fire, the front line. The <laughs> irony is that, like, some of these... <laughs> this all started with blue lives right thin yeah. blue line blue yeah. lives matter yeah. which was a counter to black lives matter of course uh so it's inherently reactionary but like some of these professions are unironically way more difficult and also way more deadly than cops yep, true. <laughs> like being a police officer in the united states of america uh it puts you in what like not even the ba- barely in the top 20 most dangerous professions like it's actually fucking delivery driver lives matter, you know, or it's landscaper lives matter. Mm. Do they have a thin green line? What is that? Oh, no, it's just federal agents. Well, oh. let's see. Uh, what's the green one here? Uh, yeah, Fe- green. Straight, just any federal agent, which we love them. Contributed solely to the military force, while the green line does stand for armed services. It also encompasses all federal agents during Border Patrol, Fish and Game Wardens. <laughs> Yeah, the park rangers and animal control. The control, uh, the color green was chosen as many uniforms. The federal agents are a shade of green. Absolutely, uh, I love that. 
Uh, the gray line represents correction officers, which, yeah. uh, you know, hey, shout out. They get their own flag. Why not? Absolutely. Oh, no, pink. Uh, Ooh, that one's great. For women, not just all women, specifically women in emergency services or armed services. So respect and, and it says all women. It was originally armed services, but it's also taken on to represent women who have breast cancer, which... Okay, it's wow, just, very inclusive. Yeah, it's very like odd. if you're gonna if you're gonna categorize this much, like at least make a separate flag, dude. They're like, Yeah, we don't give a fuck about the women. Well, again, here. the 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 so here's the real flag. And they've inadvertently created a LGBTQ um flag. Yeah. Love it. And by the way, I, I just looked it up. Police officer is twenty second most dangerous job in America. Oh, it, it's no longer it's well, it's the most the it's still very job. dangerous. You wanna know why? Because they're fucking getting murdered by COVID right now. They are getting absolutely <laughs> yeah. destroyed yeah. thoroughly by COVID. Wait, what's the one right above police? Uh, re- number 21 is grounds maintenance workers, uh, landscapers, <laughs> like Hassan said. We Told need you. a... What the fuck? I yep. Could never- you imagine, though, like, you know... L- your your landscaper is just like sorry i have to cut your fucking head off because i'm in an incredibly dangerous profession hold the phone what is going on in landscaping where these motherfuckers are getting oh dude off workplace off. safety is is really they're not shooting them it's huh. like it's just significantly more dangerous as I mean, a job I, because you're then, like falling off shit you well, know yeah and then what's the one above that dan uh heavy vehicle mechanics that makes sense to me yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's mostly people that do physically manual taxing, labor. Manual yeah. labor. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, more it's dangerous. significantly harder to do those jobs, and it's significantly more dangerous to do those jobs. And, uh, of course, they literally get more training to do said jobs <laughs> as well <laughs> right. than fucking cops. Well, let's see. The, what do we got Speaking, here? We, uh, we've got an a, interesting one at number five is garbage collectors, as we were talking wow, about earlier. Wow, so, garbage lives do matter. Solidarity, Why don't man. they get a fucking line? I mean, that's bullshit. That is Yo, number if five. Your podcast, their lives matter. That's yeah, right. I mean, ours is, I mean, hey, I take, we take a lot of emotional strength. That's true. That's I need true. my own flag. Yeah, it's dangerous out in these streets. It's weird right? I don't that's see right. podcasters on this list. So, so what's this one with the blue, green, and red? Well, this is this is just the combo because, like you oh, said, okay. they, they're kind of unintentionally recreating. It's the like rainbow pick your own flavor. Bro, that, the blue, green, and red is literally like what, what, this is a Pan African flag, dude. <laughs> right. So, is there any more, uh, Dan? Because we have like the blue with the white. Uh, those got... are all of the colors that were listed here. I mean, so anyway, you can, you can, get you can, in can a buy and fly well, they, I'm not kidding. They literally made the Pan African flag without realizing it. That's like something that all of those people that were rock flags like that would be terrified of. So here's the website, which. <laughs> Is just like smagged the fuck out. Oh uh, hell yeah! I want different thank embroidery you on veterans. Mine, brother. Get your veteran flags, military stripes, ten percent off. Outsourced <sighs> straight from China. You can be yours for three dollars. Listen, the thing is, like, we gotta venerate these guys, right? Anyway, I bought this hat from that website, Hog Life. Hell yeah, dude! Finally, some freaking get in the some mood. freaking drip around these parts, man. It's I've been hog waiting. Hog Life, boy. Kriha, uh, here's some of the top. These are some of the top. Where sales. was this made? Is this made in China too or no? Made in Bangladesh. Okay. Bangladesh, baby. Sporting yeah. American workers. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Let's go hunting, brother. I love hunting that. Hunting me some libs. I love that. Here's the top um, sales right now, just to give you an idea. We don't know them all, but we owe them all. So, like... Oh, God. It, it, this is, like... It, first of all, it's so ugly. Like, oh, my God. If they use, like, some of the creative juices that they have to, like, figure out new slurs, you know, uh, they could make, like, more creative shit, at least. Born, raised, and protected by God, guns, guts, and glory. Yeehaw! I Give praise a, to General Lee. I love me a, a, and then, a little bit of alliteration there. Yeah, this is one of the top ones. But we should show this is the LGBT... Q flag, Patriot Support Appreciation. Correction, Dispatch, EMS. You know what's funny? These are all so these are all government jobs. These people are socialists. They I love, mean they love they love a good government job. Look at yeah. these are all government employees. Like the thing is that Right? That well, the other part of that problem is that like we gotta do this for the military. We gotta like play this song and dance all the time. I mean, I have a lot of veterans in my community. They love me. I have active duty uh, members of my community as well, um, despite my, uh, you know, uh, anti-imperialist attitude. Yeah, well, nothing makes you hate the military more than serving in it. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and the hilarity there is like, we got to do this because we fuck these dudes up, okay? We send them overseas. Even at fucking basic training, they get like PTSD. They get For messed sure. up. Yeah. 
and then their bodies are fucking broken. They've sold their body to the American government. They do God knows what overseas. They're mm. like totally fucked up in the process. And then they come back and we're like, if you're really lucky or if you're really unlucky, then you get some decent medical, tr uh, you know, help, right? And and some tax benefits and whatnot. And then you also get your college paid for, so you can still suffer in the same dog shit job market with like horrible wages with no fucking labor protections whatsoever with the rest of us but on top of that now you have a communications degree and you also fucking get tremors when you are trying to pick That's cereal yeah, at you, walmart you, you don't there's no infrastructure infrastructure that can treat the trauma that these guys go through yeah seeing friends die seeing children and women die killing people yeah, being killing. shot out yeah. getting killed being injured i mean i have so much respect and I have so much sympathy for soldiers that go and go, they send them to the meat grinder. No, I mean, and I, they come I, I back and they, they for, don't. I reserve that for those who recognize the, the uh, you know. Well, I don't, I don't mince because in a way it's like they're all kind of, I mean, there's, it's even sadder to be like, uh, you know, uh, uh, subservient to your slave master. It's like slave, slave master. Uh, yeah, but there, there's, like every military member would tell you this, but like, you know, hogs or, or members of the military fucking hate other members of the military too. Like they just, you know, especially liberal ones or, or you know, Democrat ones. Uh, so it's just like, there's a lot of, there's a lot the of truth is the military is run. It's a, it's such a classist, uh, institution because they live and breathe on recruiting people without better options. Because for the most part, if you have better options, you're not going to go to the military. Yeah, there's two different kinds there. You have people that are like escaping horrible conditions yeah. or really shitty conditions or people who are in, in the middle class who only see this as a way upwards, like mm -hmm. for upward social mobility. And then you have the other side of the military, which is like military families that is like, baked into the system mm. and then you have the pete buddha judges and the fucking dan crenshaws who come from like rich families mm. they go they serve at west point yeah they come back and uh you know they get a harvard degree and then go and and you know they're uh, people that go to Fast officer track. school yeah yeah uh for the most part dan crenshaw still navy seal but like pete buddha especially like um so it's not entirely just like a the the poverty draft, but well, there I'm is talking, a poverty draft element I'm talking to it. the people in the trenches and the front line. I mean, the yeah. Marines. I mean, Pete Buttigieg, what did he say? He was, I mean, I'm assuming guys like, although Dan Crenshaw was, you know, he got a, he yeah, got yeah, an he injury. Yeah, he was Navy SEAL. He got yeah. Purple Heart. Yeah, yeah, he got an injury. But, like, that's what I mean. It's like, you literally did not. You're, you're the son of a fucking oil engineer born in, like, Scotland. You know what I mean? Like... Hmm. This dude, uh, his his dad was. I mean, his dad's real suspicious too. But I, 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 I mean, think this hate, dude did hate not the institution. I, I think you know, hate the institution, but don't hate the uh, soldiers. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I just. I mean, I do hate the fucking veterans who are like, I served, so now everyone else has to get fucked over too in a similar capacity. I'm like, how do you not recognize that? Like, you hate what the government has done to you, but then you're like advocating for the government to do that to others younger than you like how did you not learn your fucking lesson what the fuck's wrong with you dan crenshaw is a great example of this right i mean he's a piece of shit i hate him well, so leading up uh, to the main point here is that there's this movement on tiktok um of people flying the black flag which is what are they uh, pirates exactly that's what i thought too but no they're they're not pirates um they are flying. It's a Trumpist uh, threatening symbol saying it's basically a threat of violence and saying we take no prisoners. Uh, hashtag no surrender. And here's just a little overview here of what Bro, I love the salon.com article uh, on this issue because like the main photo on the salon.com article is literally like this dude's a juggalo. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, like he's I'll, a patriotic I'll pop juggalo. Yeah, so here's the a little article about it. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what's going on there, dude? They love they love LARPing, like they just they love they're fucking nerds, dude. They're weebs, okay? They're weebs for like nationalism. They're right. weebs for Donald Trump. Right. It's so fucking lame. Understanding the Trumpist latest threatening symbol, Trump zealots have began flying U.S. flags, uh, which are black, uh, which is a signal for no quarter for enemies. It's a threat of violence, and uh, yeah, we're going to get it. into all that. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, we can look at some of these TikToks, but 
I feel like a lot of stuff on TikTok, I automatically am, am inclined to assume is just like fake or c- totally overblown. Well, you tell me. It's not. I mean, these are real people. With no, no, no. Life. I mean, people do it, but like. Well, here, I you tell me. Sh- they're not yeah. going to do shit. Let's, let's watch. Oh, thing. no, I, I agree. They're not going to do shit. I mean, I'm yeah, not. It's like they but, see others and they're like, yeah, I love that. I'm going to do it, too. It's like. This eh. is uh, this one. She's explaining what the black flag movement right, means. See. And I think. What does a black American flag symbolize? It symbolizes no quarters, no surrender, the opposite of the white flag. It originated from the American Civil War back in 1861 to 65. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it was never flown in the Civil War, a black American flag. Uh, no, that's a also pirate wh- thing. why are you saying that you're a slaver? Yeah. Like I'm you're saying slaver. like I'm I'm on the losing side there. Yeah. Well, if they wave your fucking black flag, see what happens. Okay. John Brown. That's what happened. And it means just that. The opposite of the white flag. No surrender. No prisoners. Bro, what, I'm what? sorry. Let me tell you something, okay? If you fucking got like inherited a car dealership from your fucking piece of shit father and you live in like a nice little McMansion in the middle of fucking Minnesota, okay? And you're sitting on your fucking granite countertop island in the middle of your fucking, you know, nice house that's like uh, growing in value. Okay? You're not going to fucking pick up arms and like no. kill your neighbors. Shut the fuck up. No, these people are all talk. And, and also, why would you do that? For what? Donald Trump? Like, that's uh, the get thing a better that confused cause. me about this movement is that like in the South, there was obvi- this civil war um gruesome deadly horrific event you know in american history the most deadly war by far uh america's ever fought um and they were fighting over the institution of slavery the southern economy was run on slavery so it was a threat to their very existence in a way uh, their identity what are these people fighting for i don't get the conflict donald Um, trump like but like what's the you know uh, here, it's well, just the you, whole thing confused no they're me. fighting for what donald trump represents donald trump was a really good vector for their anger their anger for minority populations at least having like some kind of representation that is ultimately meaningless by the way in the form of like corporations just trying to make money off of them as well even that triggers the fuck out of them you know having a black president in a position of power regardless of uh, whether or not barack obama also uh, uh, continued on with America's like white supremacist institutions and white supremacist values doesn't matter. Um, that sort of stuff really triggers the fuck out of them. And Donald Trump was a great like fuck you to all of that. So they love him. They love him because uh, regardless of Donald Trump's like own personal point of view, regardless of what he ended up doing in office, like you know giving more uh, tax cuts for the uh, the wealthy uh, since like the rock uh, the Ronald Reagan era, like all of that doesn't matter. They just they see him as their guy who represents their values, and their values are like fuck this entire thing. I think that well, I think the discontent obviously comes from you know there's a lot of really poor fucked up white people in america too and so they see privilege they hear about all this privilege and white privilege and they go well i don't have any fucking white privilege uh you know my kids aren't going to college and but but they misplaced the but But you know where that comes from dude that comes from not having any sort of fucking community that comes from being completely alienated from your labor if you have a job that comes from not having uh, a, a support system and the only support system you do have the only sense of community that you get uh, is either the church, okay, and God knows what the fuck your evangelical psychopathic pastor is saying there, or from your consumption, whether it's a gun, Facebook. okay, but like or, or Facebook too, but like the commodities that we consume become really important parts of our identity because the work that we do no longer is is even remotely interesting or says anything about us. Well, if, right? if these people had access to a good income and education, they wouldn't give a fuck. They wouldn't be angry. Well, there's the other side of that too. Yeah. These aren't poor people. A lot of the, a lot, I mean, statistically speaking, uh, if you're wealthy in this country, you are more likely to vote Republican than Democrat. I just want to point but that these, out. These aren't wealthy people. These are like no, there's, these people. Are, these are like oh, people are, that live in a trailer, bro. No, 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 no. Not all these people. Not all these people. I mean, that obviously exists in like places like West Virginia, for example, right? Incredible amounts of poverty. Here's a little education for you. The Black American flag first appeared in the American Civil War. No, it didn't. Confederate Army soldiers flew it. Uh, to symbolize the opposite of the white uh, flag. So they're honoring their Confederate 
heritage and saying and going a step further and saying we're going to kill all the Yankees. The irony is like the slave owners represented a, a tiny fraction of the Southern population, right? Oh, but yeah. the people they that ended up dying ass, weren't the fuck. fucking slave owners no, they themselves. They were broke ass farmers. They were, yeah, exactly. So they're doing the same yeah. shit. You're doing the same shit. You're like dying for someone else's cause for Slaves no reason. Slaves were super expensive. I mean, that that was a huge status symbol to own a of slave. Of course, dude. It's yeah. like, and these dummies are still fucking throwing their bodies at the problem like those people who, who have like a financial interest care about you. You think Mitch McConnell gives a fuck about you, dude? No. If he gave a fuck about you, he would do anything for Kentucky, okay? Like, literally anything, except for doing all the worst things possible to, <laughs> you know, destroy that state. No quarter, um, no surrender. The black fa flag meant that the unit would not give up nor surrender, and that it was be kill or be killed. Woo, that girl is badass boy. Yeah, be the, be the yeah, lie. It gets better. <laughs> I'm just trying to give, give a little educational background. Yeah. Uh, here we Some go. of these people do live in like uh, horrible conditions, right? And that is a factor in their radicalization. Like, but then there are also like the first lady. You hey know, guys, there's like so rich people that do this shit too and love this shit. Here, let me find a really and good see one. this as like a way to LARP as like a real American patriot. It's all, it's all symbols. By the way, why are people mad at us about joking, uh, uh, talking about the Herman Cain Awards? I mean, when there's a large portion of the people who are literally fantasizing about civil war and murdering other Americans. Yeah, because and not, they're the real Americans, brother. That's here's why. a really good, this one has 150,000 likes. Because they think that, you know, we deserve to be murdered because we're elitist libs. And we are the reason why, uh, you know, they just feel shitty every day. When in fact, I personally think, especially if you're not like, you know, a, a, a business owner who employs like hundreds of fucking people or whatever uh you're like i am not your enemy okay we have oh we're aligned i mean we're fighting for their betterment yeah i don't give a fuck if you're like a racist piece of shit or not like i still think you deserve health care as a matter of fact if you get health care you'll be more like you'll be less likely to continue being racist at least Definitely. you'll have like some of your material problems access to college for yeah sure. Yeah. Uh, but here, this is a big one. This one had 150,000 likes. That so here, I'm, it has mu copyrighted music. Uh, he's this MAGA rapper. It's fucking awesome. But oh, this is him. No, or, no, no. The oh, music is, is okay. This is the day I get orders to go against the Constitution. I swore to protect. He's on the phone. Mug down. The day I will leave law. Oh, I was about to say this dude is not in the in the military anymore. He has the veteran body. Like this is literally he. I refuse to take orders against my oath. He's got a constitution <laughs> on his chest. <laughs> oh shit, the Punisher. I stand for the constitution of my country. What the fuck? And I stand for the people of my country, no quarter given, and the white skull. Wait, this dude has like a like a, a what is that called? Like a comforter on top of it? It's like a it's like an additional duvet. Like, com yeah, he has like a black flag duvet. Is that what it's called? Oh, I think, and yeah, but I think that's just I think the black flag. It's just flag. laid on there. It does yeah. look like that. Though. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> He's like, I he love sleeping on. I, I put my race car bed with my black flag duvet. <laughs> like, <laughs> this dude has, was it? I never seen yeah, a cop with a man bun. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, pretty funny. Second comment. You're probably a security guard at Walmart. Yeah, this dude is not. Like, he's definitely a LARPer. Uh, he might have been in the military. Like, he maybe like National Guard or something. You know what I mean? A lot of dudes do that shit. And then, like, yeah, brother. I'm this one, this I one's tours. This one's said with a lot of emotion and feeling. I'm curious what your take on this one. Okay, I love this. 100,000 really likes. Good. This is this is big. Um, hashtag One Nation, One Nation Under God, No Surrender, No Retreat. Uh, a viral video, of course. Hashtag God, of course. Uh, 13 fallen. Hashtag 13 fallen soldiers. Yeah, this is... Some of us have had enough. Please watch till the end. Well, I want to hear what they're playing, like, a little bit. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want DMCA, but, like... Yeah, you can, can we... play it for a bit. It's just some country music about, like... Uh, yeah. They like, all uh, use this song. Yeah, they're, and then the MAGA uh, rapper they use a lot. I it's slow the salute the 13 fallen and all my brothers and sisters in arms... So what I what I find funny is like people it's like bro like fucking like a hundred Afghan civilians who were helping the military got blown up in the some by the military oh yeah that, they were just firing yeah uh, they were just like firing uh, randomly yeah. at them I mean a hundred Afghans uh, an entire family uh, got fucking exploded and an murdered. entire family 
uh, of a dude who is literally a fucking, uh, uh, like a humanitarian aid worker who was coming back home, got blown away by a hellfire missile strike, and then they literally said he was ISIS. And then they were like, wow. oops, just kidding, he wasn't. Uh, sorry. I, just, I don't know how people can be so callous towards them. Like, I mean, first of all, horrible what happened to the soldiers, of course. But um, there's no... Acknowledge, you see it in the media Listen. a lot. Even on CNN I was watching, there's no acknowledgement that these f fucking 100 civilians Look, got blown he, up. Here's what's going attack. on. Here's what's going on. You're fucking, you're 18 years old, okay? You sign and, uh, you know, you get a sweet little Camaro, okay? You get a nice little Camaro. <laughs> you you uh, impregnate your high school sweetheart who's going to cheat on you regularly, okay? Here's what's Jeez. here's what's going to happen to you. Are you ready? Are you excited? I'm going to tell you from all of my fucking really close friends and all the experiences that I've, uh, that they have uh, at least relayed to me, okay? Your high school sweetheart is cheating on you. Nobody gives a fuck about what you're doing. You're out in a fucking Afghan empty poppy field in the middle of, like, some fucking valley, Okay? Dudes with uh, uh, way more to fucking lose than you, I guess, or uh, way more of an interest in like being there and know the landscape are shooting at you, crack shots from across. You don't even know where the fucking f shots are being fired from. You sit down in a fucking trench and you call air support. That's what you're going to be. That's what you're going to keep doing for a, a very long time. As everyone is like, as the media is not covering your uh, efforts in Afghanistan, nobody gives a fuck. Everybody's too focused on their own shit out here. And you start slowly realizing that as the desperation sets in, okay? You start getting angry. You're like, what the fuck? Why don't they care about this shit? And then one day, when you're driving over to a fucking empty poppy field that you're destined to protect, or you, you're supposed to be protecting, I don't know why, by the way. <laughs> well, that's how you fund, you know, JSOC operations and CIA shit overseas. Um, okay. Your shit gets blown off. Your your best friend's fucking dick gets blown off by a sniper rifle, okay? Because that's what they're doing. And nobody gives a fuck. At least those 13 people, they fucking died while they were literally evacuating civilians out of Afghanistan. Like, those dudes, those, those people gave their lives in perhaps one of the most honorable ways that you can go out in the fucking military. Uh, most of the fucking casualties are like, the dude that you were training last week literally takes the arms that you gave him and shoots you from behind, okay? Like the Afghan National Security Forces that you were training literally just buddy fuck you, and then you're dead. Like, that's, it, that's so much worse than at least, like, trying to evacuate civilians, babies, women, children out of Afghanistan and then dying to a fucking terror attack. The thing about these civilians that nobody cares about, too, is, like, these are civilians that, the, that we are in debt to. These are yeah, the civilians that helped lives up. us. We fucked their whole lives but up, specifically, dude. Specifically, these are ones that risked their lives to help the military. <laughs> Many of them translators, yeah. stuff like that. You know that we promised yeah. amnesty to. Yeah. Even the regular civilians. Man, I mean, it's yeah, so but, but but these are people we literally promised amnesty to because they fucking risked their lives and yeah. their families' lives to be a work for the American army, knowing that if the Taliban ever came back, which they did, they'd be murdered. The Taliban also didn't come back. The Taliban was brought back by the American government. The Donald Trump administration That's facilitated and negotiated that deal, facilitated the uh, the release of 5,000 Taliban prisoners, including Baradar, who is like the main Taliban guy who was in a fucking Pakistani prison that they literally flew out of that prison to meet with Mike Pompeo. So any motherfucker that says like, oh, Joe Biden, blah, 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 like I can't believe this. And I give a lot of props to Joe Biden. And I even gave a little bit of props to Donald, a lot of props to Donald Trump hmm. for even like uh, even broaching the subject of evacuation and finally ending our 20 year long endeavor here and our longest imperial conquest so far. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's literally the way that the American government of uh, handled the situation. They always knew this was going to happen. Those dudes wanted it more and we got fucking owned. Sorry. That's just the reality. No, we, definitely we got, got owned, owned by fucking rice farmers in Vietnam. Always, yeah. Dudes wearing with sandals. Flip -flop, yeah, yeah, wearing flip-flops. And we got owned by dudes wearing, again, flip-flops and fucking dresses in Afghanistan, okay? That's just how it is. Stop meddling <laughs> with other countries' businesses like this. It's so fucking stupid. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much you spend on each soldier. Uh, the dudes with the flip-flops and dresses will always fucking He win. wants it more. That's his yeah. fucking country. And yeah. you're literally creating... Uh, you're, you're, well, not only did we build these terror networks directly, by the way, the CIA did that, uh, also look up Operation Cyclone, but even Jimmy Carter did that against the USSR, um, but we also 
Like, we also created an environment that was so volatile and so fucking horrifying that, of course, people were like, well, you know, I don't really fucking like the Taliban, but, I mean, God damn it, these guys are, are coming in from fucking Iowa and, like, shooting at me and, yeah, and blowing up my fucking family. Like, I'm going to fight back. Yeah, the one really disturbing thing I heard is that uh, this was actually, even especially under Obama, is because the drone strikes were so frequent that... The kids and the families of uh, in these countries feared the clear skies, yeah, because the bombs could come at any moment from a drone strike, yeah, and they felt more comfortable during overcast because they knew the drones were impossible to drop. I mean, that is living in that perpetual terror, yeah, is absolutely fucked. It's disgusting. Yeah, um, seventy or uh, more than sixty thousand uh, civilian casualties in the most conservative <laughs> estimations uh, in both Pakistan and Afghanistan. Uh, as a consequence of drone strikes, American citizens were extrajudicially killed in these drone strikes mm. as well. Uh, and not only that, but uh, Obama only apologized when he blew up a fucking hospital in Kunduz. Okay. And they were like, my bad. Sorry about that. And a bunch of doctors without borders, like, you know, uh, like a French doctor and an Italian doctor were fucking murdered in the process. I mean, we killed journalists, we killed medics indiscriminately we kill civilians indiscriminately it is horrifying we are a monstrous fucking nation and ultimately the the gains of said activity don't even come back to us they I'm it curious, doesn't even come back it, that wouldn't justify it by the way but it doesn't even come back to you that soldier that goes out there he's not benefiting from that at all he's just a fucking pawn okay you're selling your life you're selling your body you're selling your fucking soul and then you get nothing in return. Except and lifelong the, trauma. Yeah, except lifelong trauma. And, and you know, maybe you'll get fucking 5% off at Denny's on a Wednesday. You know what I mean? And then everybody's <laughs> like jerking you off. Like, oh, thank you for your service. Yeah, you get, they don't give a fuck. Nobody right. cares. Well, okay? hold on. This guy cares. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. I salute all 13. Hold on. Wait for it and tell me he doesn't care. That's a that's a, a hard slow spell. salute. Yeah, that's right. Well, this guy seems like he's served. Uh, he's upset. He's taking down the American flag with his. I daughter. hate that we had to do this. Yep. It's time. It's time, girl. Go get the black American flag. Yeah. Dude, look how many flags this motherfucker has, dude. It's crazy. Well, it's it's all the thing is when you endure such trauma, you have to rationalize it, right? So becomes your identity Somebody has to justify to make a stand. it. <laughs> I don't know what he's making a stand against. So they're flying the black American flag. Uh, this is, I guess, you know, a uh, fed, a, uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. What are you, they never say, what are you making a stand against? They're just angry. What? They're just fucking angry, but dude. But he says we have to make a stand against what? Um, against, I don't know. They don't like, know what they're angry see, at. See, that's the fucking funny thing. People Communism. are like, people are like, oh, it's because Islam is so dangerous. Well, like, uniquely dangerous. It's like, motherfucker, you're blowing up their families and, and, and blowing up their infrastructure. They got yeah. nothing. Like, they got nothing. Anyone And, and, and they want to fight back the against this foreign force. But then you put up a fucking black flag when you can't get your jalapeno poppers at Applebee's because <laughs> there's like fucking, you know, uh, mask mandates and vaccine mandates. That's and what I guess that's my only thing is that I'm kind of discerned is that they're ready to go to civil war over is the vaccine the mandates, shit. the mask mandates. This top comment says Biden say their name. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. Breaks my heart. We live in a very sad world. It scares the hell out of me to see what this world would be when my babies grow up. Uh, leave the red, white, and blue up. Just put the black flag next to it. We can't get rid of the old glory. That's their plan. There you go. Playing right into our trap. Brother, millions stand by, beside you. We all need to stand up at one time. Swords. Uh, anyway, th there's a fetish, basically. And people whipping it up. They want to fuck up. the flag. What? They want to fuck the flag. They want to fuck. They do, actually. Yeah. Um, but people are, there's actually a lot of people whipping up the Civil War thing. Like Tim Pool is obsessed with it too. Uh, but as we go on, let's see. Here's another one. It's just like, dude, I promise you, you would want free education, good shelter, a meaningful life, just like everyone else does. Here's and, the, yeah. you know, you're, you're not going to get that. You, you're just like these, I mean, see, these are like relatively nice houses. That's what I'm saying. This is a nice not, house. Yeah. This it's not crushed. always... This notion that these are all like fucking, you know, really poor people is is not a true one. And that's like, I mean, are there definitely well, it, really? It, if you drive through poor white parts of the country, it's all bagged out. Oh, for sure. But again, 
at least amongst the voter base, because the overwhelming majority of poor people don't fucking vote. That's the issue, okay? They don't vote, because who the fuck are they gonna vote for? How are they gonna take time off work to go vote? Yeah. So voting is like a rich person's uh, endeavor, for the most part, in comparison to the working poor in this country. So let's get that straight. Well, here is Marjorie Taylor Gross, uh, got him again, uh, the Titan uh, senator. Yeah. Attack on uh, Nasty. Congress. <laughs> All right, you, you gonna so tell me that that's working class dude, real estate developer that like no, inherited her business? Like she's not. None of these people are. No, I don't think she is. But they use the working class. Yeah. So uh, anyway, Marjor Marjor and Taylor Green is is uh, just a few days ago uh, saying, should America get a national divorce? So there you have it. I say yes. Forty three percent say yes. Oh no! Actually, shocking. Says no, stay together. That's actually shocking. I love the nine percent undecided. Yeah, like, I'll go either way. Whatever. That just that just shows like they're all. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Up. Yeah, I mean it's all it's all fluff, right? This is all like uh, fantasies. It's uh, just it's it's conservative virtue signaling. Well, they couldn't even do shit with like no police force at the Capitol. You you kidding me? Like, first of all, um, the FBI now I feel like is doing pretty much what they did to Muslims uh, under the Obama and George W. Bush administrations and under the Trump administration as well. They're, I feel like they're now doing nearly identical things to like white uh, radicalized people. Mm. You know what I mean? Like white extremists and, uh, you know, white separatist movements, white extremist movements, anti-government uh, uh, movements because they are responsible for the lion's share of, of domestic terror incidents in this country since 9-11. Uh, I believe more than 75%, even higher now probably. And they're basically fucking infiltrating groups. The, the, the same thing happened with like Gretchen Whitmer. Right. Where they were like, come on, you want to do a little terror thing? Come on. Right, right, right. Come on, you, you, you want some tenorite? Hey, what's going on, brother? You want to do some direct action? You know, <laughs> that's like, that's just... You're a fucking clown. You're you're trying to blow off steam with your homies, okay? You're getting a, a you're a weekend warrior. You go to like a little gathering. You put a tent up. You know you train for the inevitable apocalypse. And then the FBI sends you some text messages, or uh, you know an informant sends you some text messages and rile you up. So then you say dumb shit like, "Yeah, we are gonna kidnap the governor." You're not gonna do shit. Shut the fuck up. I mean, there are really serious uh, versions of this, like Atomwaffen within the American military like a Nazi group that has actually done a bunch of terror plots that have been foiled. But then, you know, is, I, I just personally don't think like they're going to do shit. Oh, I agree. I mean, Ethan knows all about Adam Waffen. I know all about what? Adam Waffen? Oh, that's oh, the group that, that's the uh, group that uh, was swatting him. Yeah. They were swatting me a bunch of times and they went Christ. to jail, but those guys are actually psychos. Well, I mean, they, that's why I said they're like legit. Those yeah. are because yeah, they yeah. recruit from well, I was the like, military. Oh, fuck. I, I was like, oh shit. These are actually like murderous white supremacists. They're yeah, yeah, yeah. Targeting they, me. They get caught with like fucking, you know, like explosives and stuff yeah. regularly. Like they're, they're no, but joke. the FBI is pretty on them. It seems like, but regardless, but this is kind of what scared me in a poll, a recent poll. 52% of Trump voters say they want to separate. And then what actually really surprised me is 41% of vote Biden voters said they wanted to separate. But it's all just like hogwash, right? Like the the actual the actual boiling point of going to war with your own brothers. I guess these people are probably thinking it'd be like a cold a cold separation, a cold war, you know. But like here's my question. I mean, first of all, a lot like it, it would be over. Like it, it would be so bad for the red states, with the exception yeah. of like Texas. Like what well, the fuck? You got nothing. And it's funny because like even if you go back to the Civil War, you know, a lot of people think it was like a valiant war. The North crushed the South. The South never had a chance of beating the North. And um the oh, federal it, government. And yeah. here, by the way, is um, available at the same website. You can get a flashlight with Shut the up. American flag. That's <laughs> for true finally, patriots only. Finally. The patriot. Uh, flashlight for me. Yeah. I always wanted to fuck a rubber pussy, but, you know, it was just. <laughs> I'm going to come. Yeah, but so, like, you know, I actually did some research. So I said, okay. The conservatives want to make their own country, uh, the red states. And we say, okay. Go ahead and make your own fucking, uh, go ahead and make the new confederacy. 
Let's see how economically this is going to turn out for you guys. Um, this only frustrates them further, by the way, when you point this out. This is from 2008. The disparity is even bigger. GDP, 64% blue state. Yeah. It's, it's uh, widened yeah. since then. Um, you got Louisiana and you got Texas. Those are the big, like, two red states that are, they got a lot going on. By the way, here's medium income from blue increasing. Here is the medium income in red states decreasing. By the way, these are directly, th this doesn't have anything to do with like, you know, people being hogs or whatever. This is directly a consequence of austerity measures implemented in red states, whether because it's like politically uh, the right thing to do because you're like anti-Obama during the Obama administration or like, you know, anti-Democrat or because you're directly in the pocket of wealthy benefactors who stand to gain the most from uh, not paying taxes. Mm. So that is the reason why there's so much economic inequality in these areas. And that, of course, radicalizes people to to a degree where they are fucking putting up black flags outside <laughs> of their houses to like fight for God knows what. Here's the jobs in blue in the blue state. More there would be people. about uh, 60 to 70 percent of tech, high paying tech jobs, finance, insurance, et cetera. And in the red state, you can expect to be working in agricultural and mining and basic manufacturing. So uh, basically the, and then I have more data here. Um, let's see, here's the dependency chart. So if you look at the federal government, Obviously, every state pays into the federal government, and um, some states get more than others. So if we go down to the, this is really interesting, return on tax dollar, okay? So at the worst return, you're looking at states like Delaware, okay, it's at the very bottom, blue state. Uh, for every dollar they pay the federal government, they get 48 cents back. Yeah. Uh, they're almost entirely blue, with the ex with the exception of uh, Nebraska. I mean, Delaware is the is the tax haven uh, state, so right. So, but so go to New Jersey. Biden. New Jersey, they get fifty six cents back for every dollar yeah. they spend. If you go to the bottom, red state North Dakota gets four dollars back for every dollar. This country, this state, would be absolutely third world i mean it's it's literally a carve out for uh republican uh senate seats so right it does yeah. yeah but i mean new mexico recently went blue uh west virginia you've got 290 mississippi 280 um except it's it's almost uh, entirely I'm almost surprised dominated. By alaska i guess they do need a lot of federal funding because alaska is also resource rich yeah but so alaska is fucking deep into debt uh, well, two dollars and fifty eight cents for every dollar they pay. See, the thing is, like, I don't fault these red states for taking more uh, federal funding. They it's need fine, it, but they want to separate. They need it, right? They want to separate. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, that's why I laugh at it. It's just Here, not here's New happen. York. New York for every dollar they pay seventy cents get back. Here's California, seventy five cents get back. So if y'all want to go make your own new confederacy, expect to be a third world fucking country. I mean, they are though, but that's the so Ethan. That is what's going on. Like in America, we live in a blue state, right? We live in a wealthy part of a blue state. So our experiences are drastically different than someone who lives in the Appalachian mountains. You know what I mean? Like that guy is literally living in uh, desolate third world conditions. So much so that like European NGOs actually come in and do dental work uh, inside of stadiums in places like West Virginia. That's like it's sad. so fucking horrifying. Yeah. And these are comparable conditions that we subject our fellow uh, American men and women to. Like this is what we've done to them. And I, and I, I, it sucks. Like it hurts my fucking soul when I see that, where I'm just like, I want to give these people healthcare. I want to give these people an opportunity. I want to give these people an industry to work in. Um, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't have to, it, it doesn't always have to be fracking or fucking coal mining. It could be anything else, especially if you've been uh, out of a job for a, a decade, like you're going to take another job, especially if it's a well-paying one. Um, and it just, it sucks to see and uh, neither party is like doing enough to address that at all. Uh, and, and because of that, both parties rely on a never ending culture war where it's like, 
if you're a Democrat, you're good. If you're a Republican, you're good. You're a patriot. You care about, mm. you know, we care about the, the rights of the unborn. It's like, no, dude, they don't give a shit. These people don't give a shit about anything, okay? Neither party's representatives, for the most part, give a single flying fuck about you, especially if you're poor. They only care about you if you make more than $250,000 a year. That's the reality. That's the unfortunate reality. And because of that, they do everything in their power to make sure you can't even fucking vote. Well, you know, it's just interesting how I feel like socialism and, and I mean, even even Democrats uh, more so than, than the parties they vote for are working so much more in their interests. And yet these hogs, uh, the propagandists, the think tanks, the ones that don't give a single fuck about them are somehow through the culture war have got them blindly loyal to the point where they're ready to go to, to for a civil war, putting up black flags to fight against their own economic interests and welfare. I mean, here, finally. I mean, they did it during the Confederacy. That's what I'm saying. Like, they don't, it wouldn't have changed anything for them that dramatically. I mean, they benefited from, I guess, slavery, yeah. but like, ultimately, they fought they were rich for slave people. Owners. The rich they people. fought for rich people. Yeah, they died yeah. for fucking rich slave owners, and they're doing it again. Yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah, they were fighting for, at, yeah, it's interesting because it wasn't, it was fully unmasked then, but it was also about racial. It, it they may have been poor, but at least they knew they were better than black people. No, that's Ta-Nehisi quotes talks about that. Uh, has written extensively on that subject. That racial division in the Reconstruction era benefited capital owners because it created a it created a uh, a a system where working class whites that were also in like horrible uh, poverty conditions always at least had someone to punch down at or someone to uh, feel superior over. Yeah, and that, and that, that, was that really, goes a long way. Yeah, that did go a long way. And it's, by the way, they're getting it's still fucked. a motivator. Yeah. It, it really is. A final note, we're running out of time, but a final note on the Civil War thing here, just to enjoy your future Confederacy, overall dependency score, uh, red states, this is overall metric for all red versus blue states, much more dependent on federal aid, uh, much higher return on dollar, Federal funding, much higher. And, uh, well, this is kind of like COVID-related decline uh, in state budgets. I don't know what the fuck that one means. but That means that uh, I think, like, uh, the the coffers were emptied out in red states because people just didn't have enough income to pay taxes. Or because a lot of the people that made... So, during COVID, we had a what is known as a K-shaped recovery. So, the wealthy people made a fuckload of money like some of these billionaires yeah made like phase Elon doubled their yeah, net worth they doubled their net worths right whereas the working poor specifically in the service industry or specifically in like you know gig economy jobs they got left behind severely uh even if you were an essential employee or an essential worker like we were like oh we're gonna celebrate you we're gonna fucking you know bust out the pans at 8 p.m like we don't give a fuck we were doing the military treatment to those very same people. We were doing that exact same shit where it's like fake veneration. So you shut the fuck up mm -hmm. and you do your job. But, you know, if you want money, nope, these businesses will not give you extra money. We will not do hazard pay. We will not give you overtime. If you want that, then fuck off. You can fuck off and die, right? Red states have a lot of that. And then red states have a lot of wealth. Louisiana specifically is one of the richest hmm. because of resources and one of the poorest fucking places in the country at the same time. Interesting. And the reason for that is because it's it's resource dense, okay? But also, there's a lot of income inequality, a lot of wealth inequality, because there is no distribution. There is no distribution of the wealth that literally is like right under the fucking ground in the, and in the water. Like they just don't, they take all of that and they keep it at the fucking tippy top. And that's precisely why when the wealthy were making a lot of money, in places like California, where there is a, you know, 13% tax, uh, when the wealthy made a lot of money, the state got a $55 billion budget surplus. Mm. But in places like Louisiana, even if the wealthy were making a lot of money, because, uh, you know, the, the tax structure there benefits the wealthy and not the poor, well, their states didn't actually see uh, gigantic uh, uh, returns on, mm. uh, in, in a similar capacity to like blue states. Well, we are at a time uh too bad we didn't get to superman is bisexual i know Such dude every name. time we do this i'm like shit there's so much more to cover i know there's so much more to cover but we have a two-hour limit on youtube because we want them we have a rating system youtube green lights to make sure we don't get demonetized and they say if it's over two hours we're not going to watch that shit 
Damn. So we gotta wrap it up. Shouts out to the YouTubers watching this then, you know? Shout, yeah, the, shout out to the Raiders. Hope you give yeah. us the green one. And uh, thank you for watching. Everybody, this has been The Leftovers going hog wild since 2021. Welcome back, Donald Trump. We can't wait to see you. There's going to be the so much The Revenge Tour. Come on now. Fly those black flags, you true blood Americans. Yeah. No quarter. No quarter given. Yeah. Uh, to the military and police, by the way. And, and don't forget the tow truck drivers, which is a more dangerous job than police, apparently. Oh, for sure. Thank you for watching, everyone.